Hello, welcome back everyone. Today is the Lichas Broadcast Commentary for round number six in the candidates both for Open and Women's Section 2024 that's being held in Toronto, Canada at the same place at the same time and the first time in history as well, Laura, that both Open and Women's Sections um, are being located at the at the same place at the same time. Uh, as usual, I'm your host, International Master Irene Sukandar, and and I am joined again by my pretty <laughs> co-commentator, International Master Laura Unuk. Hi, Laura. Oh, hi, Irene. How are you doing? I am doing very fine. How are you doing? Did we get some sleep? I eventually, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, Even though yeah. it was pretty hard to get some sleep after lots of... oh. Surprises on the board, actually, because many of the games yesterday, I didn't expect to turn how they mm. eventually uh, folded no. because, oh, like the last two games we saw between um, Alivreza versus Hikaru and then Gukesh versus Abasov, mm. we thought it's, it was just going to be another two draws, right? But in the end, yeah. they scored decisive result. So... But today we we also have a very ins- exciting matchups, Laura. So I hope you're ready. I hope you have your coffee or tea and popcorn with you there and your cats. Coffee always, yeah. <laughs> oh, my cats will be arriving. They were already here from the start, but they went to get a snack as well. So maybe later for sure. <laughs> of course, I I cannot wait to see um another commentator on the screen. That's your cat Shmaki, Bryce. Right, smoky, smock, 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 just smock. yeah, like smock, smock. You know, it's <laughs> it's yeah. Uh, one day I will show you the snack. Actually, I will send you the snack so you will see what I mean. Sure, it's, sure. Looking it's forward. hard to pronounce. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I I was so impressed by yesterday's games, especially in the opening, and of course everything turned out completely different. Uh, the game I will not forget was that will definitely be Pernananda against Nepomyashi, mm. the Knight of Seven. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm still impressed. I probably I dreamed about it. You dreamt about it, <laughs> <laughs> probably. I mean, yeah. Uh, so I'm so excited to see what today is gonna bring. Yep. Before we see what's on the menu today, Laura, uh, let's start seeing the standings in the open section after round number five. So before the starting of round number six today, we have two leaders in the open section, Ian Epomneci and Gukash. Um, each of them has three and a half and not suffering any losses yet, which is a very good start because you have to start solidly in this tournament in order to win it. And then on the clear third place, uh, it's Fabiano Caruana with three out of five. And he was... Walking on a thin thread yesterday, uh, playing against Fitted, but managed to save the game and drawing the game. And Pragnananda and Hikaru, they shared two and a half points out of five. And then Fitted Gujarati is the sole player that has two out of five. And then Nijat Abhasov and Alriza Firuja, um, they have one half respectively. So this is quite actually a little surprising to have Ali Reza in the bottom of the field Laura what do you think yeah no like yesterday you asked me who I'm rooting for I said Ali Reza so I feel like I cursed him now at this point um but I mean he, he's a risky player we saw him taking a lot of risk yesterday through the opening through the middle game and then even at the end game he didn't have to go for for the loss that happened mm-hmm. and he just blundered at the end and now this is the score he has but so many rounds to go I mean all comebacks are possible I'm still rooting for him but of course that's great for Hikaru that he also made a comeback like that yeah that was the first win by Hikaru beating Alireza Firuja and uh, yeah I think Alireza just got a little bit tilted towards the end of the game yesterday mm-hmm. where he could have found the easier path to drawing the game but instead he took the riskier path and it cost him the whole game so let's see what we have on the pairings for today and we have a very interesting matchup between Gukesh versus Hikaru this is 
always mm -hmm. a class of generations um the youngster versus the well some sort of like a veteran it's it's also funny to see like out of these players uh in today's candidate hikaru is the oldest out of all so back in the day Whoa. they are wow. playing around hikaru's <laughs> age but now the players are just getting younger and younger and we also have Feeded Gujarati versus Alireza Firuja, and Alireza will be playing with black pieces. Um, well, I hope Alireza will come up something. He has to start steering the pot because he cannot just keep drawing and losing all mm -hmm. his games. Uh, he has to catch up with the remaining players in the field. We also have Prakna Nandava playing with white pieces against Nijat Abbasov. Yesterday, Nijat almost, I would say, he had the winning position at some point. But then um, he couldn't get what he wanted, and then the, the game uh, came back with equal. But then in mm. the end, it was such a tough Queen's End game to defend, and Gukesh just prevailed to be the winner. And also, yeah. last but not least, we have the game between Ian Nepomniachi versus Fabiano Caruana. Laura. <laughs> which game is gonna be the most exciting one let's make some bets today can we <laughs> can we bet on some results you know mm -hmm. i, I... <laughs> we we can guess the result yes um so yeah, let's what that. about gukesh and hikaru what what do you think will happen in that game um okay so i feel like i i'm gonna predict a draw just because i think gukesh even though he's white he will play solidly and hikaru i think was happy with yesterday's win but he's black uh, again mm -hmm. yeah so so he will also go for the solid approach now as he's already back in the game right. and you what do you think oh it's gonna be tough i think knowing how unpredictable gukash is hikari will try to play a solid approach like a saver approach for black so he would try his best to just pretty much like defend his position first because mm -hmm. he's playing with black pieces so um, my guess their game will be ended up with a draw. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and in Prague against Abasso, what can we expect? What do you think? I think Prague is playing one of his best chess so far. Um, I think Prague Nananda will win without any problem. Yeah. I I kind of want to, I mean, I agree. Like, Prague Nananda has such good spirit and such great openings here so I don't want to go against him he's just one of the favorites I feel <laughs> like just seeing what's going on in his games and his openings I'm just so impressed so I, I want to like root for him as well even though you know somebody has to root for Abbas so, so I'm, I'm gonna go against you here oh, I'm gonna say sure. this is gonna be an upset today <laughs> oh an upset yeah <laughs> We haven't really seen much of the uh, of an upset in the in the open section because most of the players they're quite uh, close range in terms of reading. So mm -hmm. yeah, not so much upset so far. Uh, what yeah. about the game between Fidit versus Ali Reza? Oh, this one's gonna be tough. Fidit was winning yesterday against Karana, so he must be a bit upset. Ali Reza lost also, very unclear game. Mm. I just, I don't know, Vidit will try, but I just think a draw is something that could be um, on the board. Yeah. And you? I think it's going to be a draw. Vidit is very mm. a very solid player. I think, um, well, he must be a little bit disappointed of uh, his performance yesterday because he almost defeated Fabiano Caruana. Mm -hmm. And he was very close in doing that. But um, maybe he missed a few moves, uh, especially Kune 4. And then he had no other option but to repeat or make perpetual. And the game ended up with a draw. So, But, but his approach has always been very calm, very solid. And I think today, he wouldn't be really over pushed things or or, or matters so um yeah i think this one is gonna gonna be another draw yeah okay and the last one pomnish against ah. karana oh, <laughs> yes this one's gonna be exciting hopefully yeah this is actually i can kind of um predict what sort of opening that they're going to play um mm. actually hang on they they used to play e4 e5 a lot um, mm -hmm. Ian will play e4 for sure 
uh, Caruana like used to play e5 a lot because, well, he's known for his um, Ruy Lopez repertoire. He's one of the very best in the world in, in Ruy Lopez as black. Um, but in mm. these candidates, he's been playing Sicilian and none of the games went to the open Sicilian. So actually, I'm very curious on what type of... Or, or what mm -hmm. variation in Sicilian that he's been preparing. Because uh, two of his opponents, whenever he played e4, c5, knight f3, knight c6, they always mm -hmm. went for bishop b5. So we can yeah. already tell knight c6 is, a, is the second move. Um, is he preparing for Shreshnikov? Is he preparing for Dragon? Or it can be anything, right? But I just want to see an open Sicilian on the board um, in the game between Ian and Fabiano. Oh yeah, okay. I I think you're right. And also I would just like to say I am Rose and just read us. Oh on, thanks, on Eric. Thanks, Eric. And I think our chats will be happy to know that Eric will be joining us in a commentary tomorrow. Yay! Oh lovely. <laughs> That's I'm so excited. I'm so excited about it. Hope yeah. you had a great stream, yeah, and hopefully see you tomorrow. Yes. Uh thanks once again, Eric, and um hello to all um that's coming from Eric Raids, the Raiders. Uh, welcome to, to the Lichas commentary. Laura and I are going to commentate on the candidates, both open and women section. And today is round number six. So we are almost halfway. Halfway. Mm -hmm. Not yet. Tomorrow is the no. halfway. But <laughs> yeah. hanging, we're hanging there. So well, we'll be fine. So What um, do you mean we're hanging here? We're in loving it. We're enjoying it. Oh, my second cat came. <laughs> Oh, My there black you go. Cat I have to show cane. it. I have to show yeah, it. Yeah, now you have to show it. I don't know if she will be seen. Oh. Ah, uh, I don't know. Do you see her? Not really. But Just let's continue. Um, oh, quickly. sorry. Oh, there ah, you go. Just going to show her when she's here because she's not going to return. So uh -huh. <laughs> I'm sorry for disturbing. No, it's okay. <laughs> Yeah, now it's a cat stream. Okay. Now, now it's, it's a, a cat, cat stream. stream. Yeah. We're changing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's let's continue. Let's continue just quickly because the I see the boards um already updated for the, the moves. So I just want to show oh. quickly in the women the standings. We still have uh Tan Zongyi as the sole leader yeah. of the tournament, three and a half out of five. And then we also have Gorchkina on the clear second with three out of five. And then we have three players with two and a half, Katrina Lahno, Salimova, and Parshali. And then in the lower field, we have Koneru, Hampi, Anna Muzijuk, and Li Yet Another surprising standing we have mm. so far because mm. the last three players that I mentioned, they are above 2,500s and they're grandmasters mm -hmm. and they should be uh, actually on the lower, uh, sorry, on the top uh, mm. or upper board. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, but but there are still so many games to go. Uh, Let's wait and see what they will come up with. And today in the women's, uh, we will have also very interesting matchups. Uh, Farshali, the youngster, will be playing against Katrina Lahno, the experienced player. Uh, Connor Hampe versus Liting Je. Tan Zongi, the leader of the tournament, versus Anna Muzichuk, who uh, almost won her game again yesterday, but uh, Farshali managed to to do the fortress and the game ended up with a draw. And we have Nurgyu Salimova, uh, I would say the dark horse, but he, but mm. she's been playing spectacular chess so far and she'll be playing yeah. against Alexander Gorchkina. And as we remember, they played in the final of the Women's World Cup 2023 in Baku and where, where Nurgyu actually almost defeated Salimova in every single game. But um, Gorchkina always mm -hmm. come up with something that's very resourceful and then manage to win the match between them two. Without further ado, Laura, yeah, I think it is time for us to start looking at the games because the games have been started. We have, uh, I'd like to, I'd like to go to this game. Uh, Ian Epamnachi versus Fabiano Caruana. Yeah, because, because there's most opening theory going on right here oh mm -hmm. no this is four nights i played this yeah i you play this obviously as mm -hmm. well uh no wait you don't i don't i, I do for both you do yeah for both actually okay. if um... oh also <laughs> with white pieces as well okay so yep. you know so you know it yeah they're yes, playing yes. this um extremely okay not critical line the um but popular line that is known to be the best for black but i mean i feel like these positions always kind of end up 
with a um, with a draw, with a draw yeah. a, especially on this top level okay mm -hmm. on on lower kind of level you never know but on this top level I don't I cannot expect anything else yes I think um, uh every single line has been explored and it has a very great chance of drawing of course and especially in the top level of chess um but what I just want to mention is uh how I I already announced before that Fabiano uh playing with black pieces uh he's always played the Sicilian in the candidate so far mm -hmm. and today he switched back to his <laughs> main approach e4 e5 against Ian so does it tell you something that maybe um you know, Fabi just wants to play like a solid chess um, and draw is fine. Draw as black pieces is fine. So, and this this game has as a high statistic of um, having a draw yeah. in the end. So let's see, castle, castle and bishop g4. So the main line yeah. would be uh, taking on d5 like this. Yeah. And then bishop yeah. g5. You play c6, yeah. all this line, you can insert h3 or not, but eventually you play queen f3. So, yeah, I've, I've, I've played yeah. like almost millions of games like this as black and as, as white. So, But here, Fabiano offered and showed us a very interesting approach um, in continuing and probably offering a more dynamic uh, play instead of tacking on d5. And then we're going to see like a very... Um, thematic draw, endgame, um, mm -hmm. but here he played bishop g4 and f3 and bishop goes to h5 and now bishop g5. So just a quick glance, what is happening? I'm such a pawn grabber, just want to show <laughs> yeah. us, yeah? Uh, what's going to happen if c takes, sorry, d takes c6? Um, I think I'd like to open our master database because... Um, Lichas has a very great feature of it. It mm -hmm. don't you think it makes your life easier when you um, open up an, a position and then you would like to see if such a position has been played or not? Because yeah, yeah, for me it it, it is a very great help. So let's take a look um, of the moves, yeah, that were played in case White took on C six. If you know they were pawn grabbers, but we can see in the database there were many games. So. Not only many games, Laura, but this position has been played by <laughs> Nepomniachtchi and Fabiano themselves for oh. two games. <laughs> so they played oh. this position before. <laughs> oh man, one, uh, both of them are in twenty twenty one. So. Oh, yes. Yeah, interesting. So... Okay, interesting choice by Fabi then. Okay, I wanted to say that Fabi's yesterday, he was playing the Ursulima with, with Black and um, he didn't really find the vibes in the opening. So I guess he really wants to play it safe today against Nepomniachtchi as he's kind of leading the tournament, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this is, okay, both games that they played ended up with a draw. And uh, mm -hmm. after Bishop G5, uh, here we're talking about d takes c6, but I think actually I'm not too sure about this position. But but here after bishop g5, Fabi has been playing queen d6 against um, Nepomniachtchi for both games. So it's interesting. Queen d6 were Fabiano's yeah. choice, but here in this position, instead of queen d6 in this game, Fabi chose to take on d5 like this. Okay, I guess he has something planned. Uh, after bishop f6, queen f6, knight d5. So white is taking the d5 pawn somehow, yeah. Uh, the question is, is this the, is this the main line to go for black these days? To, to take with a pawn on d5? I'm not sure. I mean, I play this with black, so I should know what's popular these days. But Nepo is not surprised. So after after bishop f6, queen f6, knight d5 is on the board. Uh, I guess we're going to see bishop c5 and, and somehow yeah. queen b2. Let me check, actually, because this oh, no. is... Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that black has to go bishop eight, uh, g6 at some point. That's that's one thing but so they've been playing quite fast then because after here bishop takes uh queen takes knight d5 queen b2 
Ah, if you want to come to Italy, yeah, that's fine. And according to my Leeches database, master database, there are so many top players playing this variation before. We have Yangi versus Sol Wesley, we have Paravian versus Fidid, we also have Brison Batista versus Disnik, and a lot of 26, 2700 players are playing this position. So, oh, I think Favi is just aiming for a quick draw. And it is, it is another strategy in chess as well, because, well, you might get a little bit more tired right now, uh, approaching uh, the mid event, and then a quick draw in some of the positions or some of the games actually help you to restore your energy back. So, um, well, we'll keep an eye on this, but um, yeah. I have yeah, I have a suspicion that uh, we will see some sort of a quick, quick draw, but not that quick because there is a 50 move rule to uh, make a draw or draw offer, but they can actually go by if they're going to play some repetition. So we'll see, but it's it's a, a strategy and also an interesting choice of opening too. Yeah, for both of them. I mean, these mm -hmm. four knights from Nepomniachtchi, it's not really very ambitious, but I guess he also wants to to have a break uh, from yesterday's game because yesterday we saw he was in big big trouble. Oh yeah, and both I guess them. after yeah, actually both of them. Both yeah, of you're... them were in big trouble. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's not pleasant for any of them. So I mean, four nights, interesting choice. But yeah, I think also a draw is almost guaranteed at this point. Yeah. Um, wow. I'm I'm just looking at the multi board view for the open. There are so many interesting uh, openings actually for both. Like for example, mm -hmm. uh, feed it versus Ali Reza. When was the last time you see having two bishop on c4 and f4 <laughs> in this type of Sicilian? Um, shall we shall we go there? Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Let's, let's go. go there. Let's go to this uh, game. Feed it first, Ali Reza. Okay. Um, there you go. Let's take a look from the start. E4, c5, knight f3, d6, and. So far, so good for knights variation. Yeah, yeah, and bishop c four. This is quite a up and coming variation. Uh, queen b six and knight b three. Is this another thematic idea? And after e six, bishop f four and queen d eight. Okay, Laura, what's your take on this one? <laughs> what's my take on queen d8 <laughs> um you know i prefer my queens on a6 squares so <laughs> um no i'm kidding of course i i guess this is something i mean obviously this is something alireza prepared i am not a sicilian player mm -hmm. nor e4 player so these are not really positions i'm familiar with nor do i understand them that well um so I guess what do you, what's what's the idea? What is the idea? How do you want to approach? Do you want to go e five? Do you want to go a six b five? How how are you playing with black usually? Yeah. Uh. Well, I'm a Sicilian player. I'm on. I'm I'm also an e four player, but I don't play this type of Sicilian. But mm -hmm. um, I was just thinking this may be just some order of moves that you try to confuse your opponent, because mm -hmm. uh. Well, queen d eight. You want to go keep an eye on d6, right? So you play queen d8. The thing is, I think if you play e5, this might turn into a better version of like Shreshnikov type, maybe after bishop g5, because you want to put your knight on, on d5 at <laughs> some point. Mm -hmm. So if you have something like this, I think you can you can immediately take now or you can play castle first. So and then just giving the d5 square for for white pieces, I don't think this is what um, black has in mind. So that's why you just move the queen back to d8. And surprisingly, uh, I think my my suspicion my suspicion is right yeah. because I saw in the master database how the game continued um, between Teresa Hakyan versus Boris Gilvan, and um, okay. after queen d8. The game went with bishop e2. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, bishop e2. That's right. So you could have jumped to e2 on one move from f1, but instead you play bishop c4 first, followed by bishop e2. So uh, because at some point, 
yeah, this is this is uh, going to be like the target of attack, having the bishop on c4, but but without the preserving square on b3 to move after a6 b5 because eventually this is this is what black will play in the end, and yeah, before uh, anything else, and you feel like bishop e2 is the move that you're going to make uh, eventually. So mm -hmm. in the game between Taras Sahakian versus Galvan, this is what happened, and after a6. A4, B6, and we we see like the normal structure in the Hedgehog Sicilian. Yeah. So this is just some sort of a transposition. Mm -hmm. um, maybe a strategy for both players also to avoid the mainstream theory because. Um, but judging from the from the time situation, it feels like Firuza is not hesitant in playing all these moves <laughs> because I'm yeah. sure. I'm sure it, this is not the preparation by Fitted. I mean, I'm sure, um, sorry, Ali Reza is not expecting this uh, coming from Fitted, but he's been playing all the moves quite quickly. What do you think, Laura? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if uh, Vidit was expecting that from Firuja or Firuja from Vidit. I just, in general, feel like Vidit has been a bit slow this tournament mm. with his time management. So him spending time on move eight... Uh, after queen date, of course, it's he has to ask himself questions like what is the idea of what transposition he wants to make. Um, like you said, the Gelfand game, bishop e2 makes makes so much sense. I don't know. I um I like what Firuja is doing so far. So I want to see the tricks, you know, yeah, the, coming out. <laughs> I think the reason why Fidit is taking such a long time because queen d8. Um, I, I could find only one game that the game that I, I just mentioned, Tarasaki yeah. versus Gelfan, because the main line in this position is actually knight e5. This is the way for you to save the d6, mm -hmm. uh, the, the d6 pawn. Yeah. And I guess if Alreza uh, played this move instead of queen d8, Fidit would have replied right away, because I think this is still within his preparation. Uh, knight e5 or knight a5, any, any, any knight move, uh, basically. And mm. knight e5 looks like a very, very fine uh, continuation because knight e5 is attacking the bishop. You don't want to trade this bishop, so you kind of like move to e2 and then reshuffle your pieces again. And this is still like a normal Sicilian. So um, I guess Fidit is thinking what happened after queen d8, whether he should do something different or not. But we have some move. So Fidit decided to just to up the queen normally mm. to d2 and Ali Reza replied straight away by a6 and this is the common idea to play b5 so now the question for Fidit is whether he's going to play a4 or going to play bishop e2 yeah mm -hmm. yeah that's a good I mean also Ali Reza just played the a6 immediately so he 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 was prepared for queen d2 yeah I I think this game can become wild as as you know sicilians do <laughs> sometimes uh and i don't know i think it's yeah it's really up to be at this point to to figure out bishop e2 a4 what would you play um yeah very good question because each of these move um has its own meaning mm. if a4 you just straightforward stopping b5 but if you play yeah. bishop e2 maybe you can transpose it to f3 but also sometimes you know you you provoke your your opponent to play b5 just to weaken the the queen side but after b5 mm -hmm. i think you have to take care of this little pawn maybe playing f3 first and followed by a4 later on and then you can castle and then at mm -hmm. least at least once once the pawn is on already is on b4 mm -hmm. then you can uh go around it this night going here and then here so this this can be also an idea but if you don't want to deal something about it, uh, you can simply play a4 and then your opponent will have to resort to b6 eventually in order to develop this bishop to b7. Yeah. Both are good choices, but I think I would just go for a4. You would go for a4? Mm -hmm. I don't know, long term, is b4 square important? I mean, I can also play c3 in case I will need to take advantage of it. So I guess a4 is just like, yeah, a good, en good enough approach for not weakening everything and mm -hmm. bishop b2 is a bit passive 
passive yeah just not passive aggressive maybe more passive <laughs> passive aggressive <laughs> But yeah, that's the aggressive, not uh, without the aggressive part. Without you know? the aggressive part. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, like we'll see, we'll see. Yeah, A four seems seems absolutely fine at this point. Well, we'll see what we did will uh, decide on this game. But there are some moves yeah. happening between. I, I would like to circle to all okay. of the games, of course, but the game between Ian and Fabi, I have a feeling it's gonna end anytime soon. Like <laughs> at some point these these people, you know, will find some random repetition. repetition yeah. yeah. So we saw the position after Quintex B2. And here Ian uh played rook b1, and then you have to give a check, otherwise the bishop on b4 uh mm -hmm. will be fallen. And king h1, and here you play queen e5. Um and I think the idea is to play bishop d6, hitting on h2. And in this position, Ian play rook e1. And the queen resorts back to uh, d6. And Ian gave a check. And you have to play king h8. And this is the current position so far. Yeah. Um, I feel like they're still both in theory. <laughs> yeah. Somehow, queen yeah. Two. Queen e2, okay. I mean, makes sense. Queen e4 is coming even though I don't know if it's really a threat because bishop g6. I feel like this is the point where, yeah, somehow you have to go bishop g6 one way or the other, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. exactly. Right away, bishop g6, yeah. And uh, how are you going to respond on this? I mean, I'm sure this variation is... Um, what I was going to say is uh, all these grandmasters, they have their specific folder of how to draw, <laughs> like how to make force draw right from the opening as white and as black pieces. So I'm sure this is one of the of the variation that they have in mm -hmm. their file or, or in their folder. Because sometimes the draws that they make is not all it's not always like you know the the Berlin draws or, yeah. or the London draws with Quintex B2, Rook B1, Queen A2, Rook A1, all this repetition. There's so many repetitions like that, but uh what's funny is all these top level grammar so they keep finding a longer <laughs> and a newer variation to make yeah. a force draw since the beginning so and yeah they they did the homework and i'm just going to to watch this in case i need to make a force draw <laughs> later in the future <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I wanted to say I need those folders, you know. I I just want to I want to get them. So this one is for sure going uh in my files. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay, but yeah, knight g six happened, which is very logical, and mm -hmm. Fabi just took with the h pawn, which is also very natural. So we're having opposite color bishops, even though there are still queens and rooks on the board. I I expect some kind of queenie five to happen <laughs> you know and yeah. just exchanging exchanging the queens yes yes very exciting so many fire <laughs> fireworks on the board um i cannot wait to come back to this one again <laughs> but uh, let's, <laughs> but yeah let's see other um, games uh that might be equally exciting is this game okay we have catalan so let me entertain you with a catalan laura because yes. you're a catalan player uh, yes. we have this game Salimova versus Gorchkina let's see it from the start so d4 d5 c4 e6 and normal Catalan bishop e7 the classical approach bishop g2 castle so as we remember in this position when Salimova was playing against Conor Humpy Conor re resorted to the variation of knight e4 and f5 and then this, this type of Dutch position which looked good but uh, she didn't continue it well, and Salimova scored her first win in the candidate on that game. And here, Gerchkina played castle. Castle detects c4, queen c2, uh, a6, also the normal classical uh, Catalan. And after a4, oh, just, just to actually mention in this position that after... Yeah, this is the idea, yeah? If you don't play a4, a4 is one of the main lines, but if you don't play yeah. this, then uh, the bishop will come from this direction. But exactly. if in this position, if white play a4, then since you cannot really play b5 uh, in this position due to the diagonal to the a8, uh, so black will play bishop d7. And after castle, there is bishop c6 and bishop g5, knight bd7. 
takes takes and knight c3 so this position i'm sure has been played numerous times right mm -hmm. laura and yeah but yeah this is classic one yeah but how often uh do you find this uh, variation in your own games yeah the thing is this variation is not very popular with black anymore mm -hmm. because black has so many approaches now especially like all these a5 ideas are very new and yes. also instead of going a6 People like Nepomniachtchi, I think, plays B five, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so there are just so many interesting lines against the Catalan, and I'm surprised Goryachkina chose something so classical, especially because this one, uh, from my experience, is much okay, not much, but kind of easier position for White to play, as you have the center mm -hmm. E4 will be coming. White wants to push D five. At some point, uh, we're taking all the squares. So I I, ha I have a feeling, you know, from the World Cup, Goryachkina kind of didn't get the good enough positions against Salimova. So maybe Salimova is, a yeah. great, uh, is not a great opponent for Goryachkina. So maybe she just really wants to play a classical position, maybe some end game where she can get the most of the game. Right, yeah, we remember from Baku, um, there were so many Queen's Gambit accepted. Um, mm. Not accepted, sorry. Queen's Gambit declined with the exchange variation on d5. Let it be Salimova playing white or black. Mm -hmm. So many, so many cases when they're playing against each other, it was, it was the opening uh, that they chose. But here, Salimova just stick to her Catalan repertoire. And okay, this is not the first Catalan that she played in the candidates. Of course, uh, Goryachkina uh, has prepared against mm -hmm. it. And yeah, I don't know much about Goryachkina's repertoire against Catalan, but um, <laughs> I would actually, yeah, I would actually expect that he uh, that she would go for something that's more ambitious mm -hmm. as black. But this one also like not like the other game that's drawn. In so many games, this one, even though it's like equalish and many draws as well, but I think it still offers some imbalanced position due to uh, the trade between the bishop and the knight. So at least we have like two bishops against two bishops and one knight against two knights versus one bishop. I mean that little imbalance can actually make a little difference to to the dynamic of the of the game. So we'll keep an eye on this one because they are still within their opening preparation and theory. Um, Let's switch to the game between Gukesh and Hikaru because I've been wanting to see this one since the start. I was just wondering yeah. what sort of opening that they're playing because it looks like a very familiar position, but I cannot pinpoint which opening it started with. So turns out it's Sicilian. And with the G6 early, the accelerated, mm -hmm. no, the, not the accelerated, the hyper accelerated dragon <laughs> because yeah. um, it's, it's, um, it's very fast. Uh, and c3, so Gukash uh, just play c3. Okay, the main line, I just want to share the chat, uh, would mm -hmm. be like, you still play d4 as the open Sicilian takes. And instead of, of taking with the knight, uh, and then maybe transpose to Maroxy bind position or variation, you can actually take it with the queen, like this, like this. And then I think the, in the old good days, um, e5 is the main line and then followed by something like this and then you go like this and so on but uh, these days you can sort to any other moves here there is knight c3 you can choose um, and also mm -hmm. funny enough there is bishop b5 uh, hmm. yeah it's just to stop knight, knight here but this is this is one of the side lines but anyway uh, I think Gukash wouldn't like to go to the main line and then he chose to play c3, a very solid approach against this system. And after d5, you kind of like having um, this type of uh, Sicilian with, um, yeah, with the with Alapin actually with g6 Alapin. So mm -hmm. we can transpose this position to c3, let's say. And yeah. then there is a very huge line after c3 g6, and then after d5, sorry, after d4. Uh, hang on, after this actually, and then you just play something like this, this, and then yeah, and transpose to something like this. And this position, um, I think if you put engine on, 
it will be like plus 0.40 or 50 for white but mm -hmm. um it's always it's always um interesting to play for for black because this offers many oh they exactly put the position oh no no it's, it's different so but it offers lots of uh, yeah yeah lots of nuances for both sides and bishop g4 because eventually you want to play e6 but well you're a french player laura and you'd like your bishop to be on c8 <laughs> but unfortunately in this type of sicilian uh it's better to get the bishop out of this diagonal before playing oh, e6 no. <laughs> yeah so bishop g4 and bishop b5 knight c6 takes takes and castle and mm. c4 oh. C4, that's interesting. That is very interesting. Just direct. Yeah, just yeah. direct there uh, to stop D4 maybe uh, so that you can meet mm -hmm. D3 or D4 with uh, yeah. C takes D3 or, and <laughs> pass on. Queen takes D3, Bishop takes F3. Uh, so far, it's been quite hmm. simple. I don't, yeah, I don't know how I feel about this because these double C pawns looked very exciting at the beginning and now they just exchanged like already two pieces but i mean the bishop is on g7 that always makes the game interesting knight is probably coming from h6 to f5 if possible it's it's still i mean it's a game it's obviously a game but i don't know would you play this with white or black would you prefer to play this with white or black yeah this this is mainly the question here yeah uh what i actually don't like from Gukash preparation so far, Laura. Um, mm -hmm. He has a very different approach and preparation compared to Pratananda. Because look at this position. I mean, usually you'd like to keep the, the center intact and then and what will I enjoy a better position anyway? But I think Gukash um, has chosen a rather safer option. Mm -hmm. So it he likes to play with uh, two results, of course, and he's playing with white pieces, mm -hmm. but things have gone a little bit too easy right now for Hikaru mm -hmm. as black, you know, because his opening choice um, ought to be punished. Um, yeah, but somehow should. Yeah, so, but but how things go, it's like, okay, let's let's play chess and then see who's, who's the best. But... If you see how Pragnananda has been playing, even though she got sorry, even though he got punished when he played uh, too aggressively against Gukash, but we could appreciate how he played his games, um, especially against Fidit, uh, mm -hmm. when he played this delayed uh, Schliemann, and also yesterday um, it started off as as um, a normal Petrov line, but ooh, it offered so many spicy <laughs> stuff there after knight take f7 and he was actually plus two or almost plus three. So yeah. I like to see and observe these type of approaches and especially both Pragnananda and Gukesh, uh, they're of similar age. I think they're how old are they? Like 17, 18, something like that, yeah? There's, yeah, I think there's one year difference. One year difference them. and Pragnananda is older, yeah? I think... I think so. I'm not sure. I think if so. you're not yeah. sure, I have this one. <laughs> Let's meet the candidates. And this is my cheat sheet. Um, <laughs> yeah, so Pragnananda is um, 18 years old, and Gukesh, where's Gukesh? Oh, there you go. 17 <laughs> years old, and they're okay. They're very similar in strength. Uh, they they have similar rating right now, the same rating. Um, but yeah, this is just interesting how the yeah a different approach in preparation. Approach. I feel like. And different, I think it's also because the influence of their seconds too. Ragnar is seconded mm -hmm. by Peter Swidler, and we know the type of player um, Peter Swidler is. And um, Gukesh has been working for a couple of years now with Gajowski, Gregor Gajowski, who mm -hmm. used to also work for Fishy Anan. And yeah, I'm sure I'm sure there is a whole team behind behind him, uh, but. Yeah, maybe. Well, it's good to also be be a little bit more secretive, right? Not to reveal who are your seconds to the people. Yeah, for sure. But even though there are so many great grandmasters working for different players mm -hmm. these days, it's and everybody has their own ideas. So even if people know who's your who's your second, doesn't tell you much about what they're gonna play. Yeah, they just 
tells you more about the approach somehow. Right. But like I said, like I am absolutely surprised by Fernanda's approach, but posit very, very positive way. So I did not expect that from him. I also expected him to be more, more solid. But from Gukesh, I kind of expected the solid way as he is very young. He is gaining experience here and he just, yeah, he just wants to, you know, get used to this kind of format. So in probably in the next years, he can he can come back and get more aggressive. Right. And talking about Fraknananda and his opening approach, we can actually <laughs> switch to his game and see what is currently going on because this looks interesting in the first glance. There is... Um, hmm unusual uh pawn structure over there so let's see it from the start <laughs> yeah. so d4 d5 and then we see um okay. a normal queen's gambit decline and oh we okay, see tarish again so we are switching mm -hmm. to tarish now and after this a complete symmetrical position and a3 a6 another symmetrical position but after b3 uh abbas took on d4 takes takes mm -hmm. and then bishop e7 c5 very interesting choice which met mm -hmm. immediately by b6 not to cement um the pawn on b4 and a3 and then i think it's just going to be better for for white anyway so you have to neutralize this uh c5 pawn first and cb queen b and b4 knight e4 offering a trade uh you cannot take it because your default pawn will fall so Pragnananda play knight a4, attacking the queen, queen b8, and now it is hmm. white's turn. Wow, wow, what an interesting opening choice by by both of them. Mm -hmm. Like I was hoping Pragnananda will go back to the Catalan after the Gukash game, but um seems like he wants something else today. The position is very interesting. I like it. I mean, if possible, I would love to get this knight on c5 and just let it be there forever. But that's also the idea of knight e4, yeah. You're stopping these kind of ideas from mm -hmm. happening soon. But I like it. I am a different player. Uh, and this is going to be kind of very strategical, maybe a masterpiece at the end. Who knows? We'll see what's going to happen. But I, I, I like it. And you? What do you think? Yeah, Um. I like... I like when I have more space for my pieces. <laughs> um, I like also to have more flexibility in developing my, my pieces too. Because I was just looking at this bishop on c8, mm -hmm. which um, doesn't look so nice at the moment. I mean, I, and I'm just also trying to imagine where could this bishop go in the end. Because eventually you have to develop this bishop. And the knight on e4 is standing actually very nicely. And mm -hmm. potentially you will cement it with f5 in the end. So now after queen b8, uh, I think Pragnanada is trying to um, choose which strategy that he's gonna play, because also he can he can try to prepare for short castle by moving this mm -hmm. bishop to d3, but also he can start with something like h4, and and try to attack the the king mm -hmm. side because this king will eventually castle anyway or alternatively he can just play a useful developing move with this bishop and wait until your opponent uh is indeed castled when and then when he castles you can start attacking so there are so many i think in my opinion there are so many strategy that that white can choose in this one and i think mm -hmm. pragnananda's next move will reveal which one that he's actually looking at yeah this game can develop in very various different ways i like your h4 approach it's <laughs> very engine like we should be too of course very natural start mm -hmm. waiting for black to castle and then we just go all in you know g4 h4 h5 <laughs> that is possible but maybe also uh pragnananda is just choosing a calmer approach just yes, bishop e2 and castle because mm -hmm. uh this is also maybe not a bad opening right and then i no, think i sure. understand why bishop goes to e2 not to d3 because you kind of like saving this this square for uh, other pieces and also you don't want to like for example after castle sorry mm -hmm. after castle you might want to kick this knight out with f3 mm -hmm. so you can i don't know push it here knight 91 seems good because yeah you push f3 and kind of you want to go knight d3 as well somehow to put a uh, knight to c5 square i feel like it's it's 
such a good positional advantage if you manage to do that. Yeah. Um, so many ideas, many ideas. And uh, yeah, so Praktanana has been playing quite an aggressive chess so far. But this one, I think it's going to be quite uh, strategical. Mm -hmm. And it's worth looking at this from uh, one point to another. Uh, let me switch us back to the game between Ian versus Fabiano. I'm just look, uh. I'm just trying to find where are <laughs> yeah where or which point that they are going to repeat the moves or are they going to play for the next uh, 70 moves until move 40? I don't know. But you uh, see, um... the games have been just very very. <laughs> Oh, like like very calm so we saw the position of the bishop g6 and then knight takes takes and then queen here offering another trade and mm. actually <laughs> it's like counter trade yeah uh counter over like hey i want to trade my queen and then um black was like hey i want to trade my rook and okay why don't we trade both <laughs> <laughs> and after the before, yeah, this is this is the current position right now. So, yeah, you can play. I think. What do you think, Laura? Uh, is it easy, or still has some work to do to defend this position? Oh wait, so rook e four was played instead of rook e three. Okay, yeah, no, it makes more sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, what would you like to defend? <laughs> There's nothing to defend, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, we're, we're basically just trying to find a way how to draw the fastest. Um, so first, let's not blunder a checkmate. Yeah, let's not go uh, rook before oh, yeah. with black. Um, let's maybe start with something like g6 and then rook before next move. I guess white kind of wants to go rook a4, though. Yeah, but it, there is always bishop c5 yeah. and then bishop b6. And you can always give up one pawn if you if you really need to. So, yeah, but yeah, we don't need to. Yeah, I don't think so. so. Yeah. So okay. Uh, well, they are still on move number twenty four. It's sixteen moves to go for Ian and seventeen mm -hmm. moves to go to for Fabi to meet the fifty move draw rule. So okay, let's let's get back to this position sometime later. Meanwhile, yeah. uh, which game do you think ah. is interesting maybe this one between Fashali and Lahnau because I see some sort of okay, yeah. coming up so they start with uh, Rulapes and Lahnau has been employing uh, Rulapes also in the which round um, the game between Anna Muzichuk and Lahnau he also she also played the Rulapes and with mm -hmm. the little hint of Marshall Gambit here, wow, look at this. So in Rule of Peace, uh, we know about the old Marshall Gambit where it always, not always, but most of the time it ended up with a draw. And the hint for Marshall Gambit is that you castle on the seven move like this. You don't mm -hmm. play d6 because that's the essence of Marshall Gambit that you want mm -hmm. to play d5 right away. And in other games, when you want to refute the martial gambit you play h3 in this move or you play mm -hmm. a4 in this move this is this is what we called with anti martial but in mm -hmm. this position surprisingly and interestingly enough uh Fashali chose to accept the martial gambit by playing c3 and usually if you just want to bluff your opponent that <laughs> You know, you show your intention to play martial gambit, but you actually don't want to play martial gambit. You can switch back to d6, and this is just a normal transposition in the main rule of pass. But instead, Lahno really intent to play the martial gambit herself. So after c3, she was not hesitant to play d5, e d5, knight d5. And in this position, there are many, 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 many games where you took the gambit by taking on e5 like this, takes, takes, and c6. And here, white has a few choices to play d3 or d4. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to turn to a complete um, full memorization of variation. It's like testing your opponent how, how good is your memory in martial <laughs> gambit. And instead of taking on the gambit or accept the gambit, um, here, Fashali just calmly play d3 and this might turn into some sort of position from Guccio Piano. So there are so many 
um, little nuances and transp transpositions occurring on this game. So after d3, bishop b7, I think it's almost like an automatic move to play bishop b7. And here a4, followed by b4 and a5. And here king h8, uh, the idea is to support this pawn with f6, or maybe at some point you want to play f5. So just to get away from this spin, king h8 is a very subtle move. And here, Paishali decided to start the approach by start the attack by playing d3 and after bishop uh, after b takes c3 now Fashali is thinking on how how to continue whether to take on c3 with the pawn with the knight or taking the pawn on e5 there are a few choices mm -hmm. here let me just pull up the liches master mm -hmm. database if we have any games apparently not okay that's that's yeah, no, this D4 idea is very interesting by Vaishali. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I don't know. I, I'm surprised that she went for for the gambit, you know, to play against the marshal. It's not really popular these days, or am I wrong? Well, it's popular. Again, I'm sure many lines in the marshal gambit has <laughs> been in the fourth draw folder that we mm. we talked earlier it's um if you really want but it's it's a, a riskier way to make a fourth draw because yeah, there are also sure. many other uh, lines that you can easily get um a draw by force like for example if you remember if you remember in the final in baku between mm -hmm. park nanana mm -hmm. versus uh magnus and also and I, I just have to give it up to magnus for having a very nice strategy uh, because he, uh, he told in the interview he was sick and he just wanted to play two very, very quick classical games, which both ended up with a draw and he chose this line. And um, I'm sure this is of part of the strategy uh, by Magnus, like this position. And then they went for this type of end game, which mm. uh, we know uh, there are so many games that, end up with a draw like this and then takes and takes like this and takes like this and then like this and uh queen e6 i think it was the game or mm -hmm. you can also play queen e5 and then like queen e2 you swap off the queens and then just draw the draw the remaining of the games without any problem but uh yeah this is just the thing with the top level players yeah uh, they have these files that they can choose and then um, also the degree of risk in every variation or, or opening that they chose to make a first draw, which um, I believe is very important to have as well, especially uh, you cannot be perfectly fit for all the games, especially a marathon event like this. So sometimes it is nice to take a breather, yeah, not to really mm. over push so much and then just, okay, I'll give it for one game to make a quick draw so I can rest because again, chess is is exhausting. <laughs> so exhausting. <laughs> yeah, for for a chess game, how many hours do you prepare, Laura? Like, let's say you have one game uh, a day, not like in Menorca, but just like a normal yeah, yeah, yeah. a normal tournament, like one game a day. Sometimes it can only be forty five minutes, which is minimum. I feel like, and it sometimes it can take like three hours or I really try to save my energy so I don't think I will go above three hours but even that is very much a lot yeah. imagine then preparing three hours and then you have to play for five hours or more it's so it's so tiring so yeah it's very important to save energy and you um it's ranging between more than one hour for sure to two and a half mm. hours but yeah for example we, we both play in the olympiads yeah and then this is such yeah. a such an important event and they have one game a day and then you have to really prepare yourself because you are not only playing <laughs> playing for your name or for yourself but you are playing for your own country and it's a team event so um yeah. sometimes you take that very very seriously and uh that can yeah, my preparation for such an event could be up to three hours too. Like depending on the mm -hmm. opening, of course. Because sometimes course, yeah. sometimes I feel happy if I couldn't find any of the <laughs> games of my opening. It yeah. means like, hey, I don't have to prepare. <laughs> yeah, me too. I feel the same way. But somehow, you know, back in your mind, you're like, okay, but I still still should be 
um, prepared more than my opponents uh, because they are probably preparing with their coaches right now. So yeah. then, then what happens with me, I just start repeating all my openings and at the end it takes more time. Yeah. So it's, it's yeah. exhausting either way. Yeah. Yeah. And also you, you take time to analyze uh, the games afterwards and, and yeah. it's, it's also going to be um, very exhausting too. Yeah, so, yeah, and this is, we have 14 games in the candidates. At some point, um, I would say at some point, all the players will be very tired. And then maybe you can also watch it in their interviews. Like maybe they struggle to sleep, they struggle to keep up because the routine that you set from the beginning of the event will, will gradually change toward the middle part of the event until the end of the event. Because, mm -hmm. because I sleep less and less. For yeah. example, like in the in the earlier stage of the event, I would keep my routine, but then eventually, I would break it myself because I cannot sleep after the yeah. game, and and there are so many things that's um contributing to that factor. So yeah, so this is actually the role of other seconds. If you have the non chess player second, right, who, who can tell you, uh, or to <laughs> get you on to the relax, track yeah. to relax, or just. <laughs> like a walking partner or anything or well unfortunately you cannot bring your pets to tournaments right <laughs> but, yes that's the bad part about chess yes um otherwise i'm sure you would have brought uh one or even both <laughs> of your cats to your tournaments to make you relax after the game oh yeah. The, uh, yeah i've been thinking about it for so long you know how good it would be after you you lose a game like a very hard game and you just go to the room and you have cats there to relax you mm, mm. imagine imagine it's a dream but it cannot <laughs> be done you know this is chess this is we're chess. talking about yeah yes well uh Fashali is still thinking and she is spoiled with choices and i think meanwhile i'd like us to go back to the game between feed it versus ali reza because apparently if we can take a look from the multi-board view um let me refresh this one Mm -hmm. Ali Reza is enjoying a kind of slightly better position. Uh, sorry, Fidit is enjoying a slightly better position against Ali Reza. And for good reason, mm -hmm. because, uh, well, I'm a coach myself. And this is something that I'd like to tell my students that you shouldn't move many, you shouldn't move a piece for many moves mm -hmm. in a row. And we can tell, like, from the last position, queen b6, how many yeah. moves this queen um, has been played, right? So we saw the position up to queen d8. And Fidit chose to play queen d2, a6. Oh, not a4, but a3. Try, mm. Mm -hmm. So after b5, bishop a2, at least now there is no b4. And the knight can still stay on c3. And after bishop b7, long castle and queen b6. So this queen from here was moved to b6 and then moved back to <laughs> b8 and now move again to b6. Yeah, So interesting approach. Interesting, interesting approach, but it looks suspicious to me. I mean, we have this position <laughs> in a few, not a few, in, in many... Um, Sicilian games, yeah, and mm -hmm. usually this was rich, uh, mutually in the, in the, or in the right manner, like like the queen will move to b six in like one step and not like moving mm -hmm. back and forth like that, and maybe at this position the black is already castled like long side or short side and the bishop is already on on a seven, but now, uh, Fidit has a few tempi up, and after queen b six is being played and Fidit is currently thinking I'm just wondering how much time okay so he's thinking for five minutes now and I think it's a good start for for Fidit because um, many of his opponents trying to stray away from the mainstream <laughs> theory and mm -hmm. they couldn't keep up they couldn't keep up and Ali Reza um, is trying to play some interesting line, of course, a creative one. But I think if Fidit just keeps playing a calm chess and then a beautiful chess, actually, like how he played against Hikaru, um, I think he could win this one and we might see an upset. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we already saw yesterday against Fidit against Karana how Fidit was also 
kind of surprised in the opening. Mm -hmm. He he didn't exactly know how to approach the position. Like he like Rana was more prepared. That's what I mean. And today I feel like it's the same, but both times Vidit is just getting such a great position. Mm -hmm. So he's just relying on his intuition that he understands these positions better or well enough to don't to not need to know a lot of theory. Mm -hmm. And so far, I mean, if if the evil bar it's what it says, that's like it's working out great for him, yeah. Yeah. So let's say just some move here. Uh how will you start this move for Fidit? Queen b6 was played. I think the intention is to castle. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if the d6 pawn are really untouchable. Mm -hmm. Because I think you have to play some concrete chess in this position. I mean, mm -hmm. um, a move like bishop e3 and then followed by f4, I'm sure it is a nice move. And it is mm -hmm. a nice approach. Like this is, if you if you do long castle like what we did do, I think... Mm -hmm. um, in a normal situation, you would play this this type of moves. Bishop e3, usually jumping from actually c1 and ended up on e3, not from f4. And then you play f4, you play g4, you play g5, mm -hmm. all this um, uh, pawn storm on the king side. But having the queen on b6, I think the most critical line in this position is whether the bishop can take on d6 or not. Okay, I mean, let's think about it. Mm -hmm. What if I... yeah. What if I just long castle after this? Yes, good question. And after you long castle... Uh, because after e5, I guess 95 is coming. 95, yes, very so... good. Yeah, I think that's it, right? And the bishop is lost. Yeah, I was trying to find some tricks uh, with, with bishop, bishop c5, yeah. bishop c7, yeah, yeah. yeah, it didn't work. <laughs> that's exactly, it just doesn't work. So I guess that's why bishop d6 is probably not really the, the right move right now. Mm -hmm. so, like we need to, we need to attack in some other way, I feel like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because if black long castles, yeah, I mean, he's doing fine, but he already played a6, b5. Yeah. So... In long term, that's a bit risky, I feel like, especially uh, because White's King is so safe. Mm -hmm. mm, so how would we approach this? Like, we have to be prepared for Long Castle. Because if Black just goes Bishop E7 and Short Castle, like you said, we just have G4, G5, mm -hmm. we move the Bishop F4, and this looks so great. So mm -hmm. we just need to know what to do when Firuja Long Castles. Yeah, mm. but first... um. What to do here? Uh, I was also thinking if, okay, bishop e3 is a candidate move, but I also mm -hmm. like the move g4 right away. Yeah, yeah, like, I like this one. Yeah, and then if you long castle, then I'll move it again to g5. And you have yeah. to go here. Well, yeah. this looks and really <laughs> nice for white, but again, it's still far from from winning. So, so white still has to also work hard on how to continue this, but at least... At least this bishop, I think, again, spoiled with choices. You can put it on e3, you can put it on g3. I think they are both fine. And one thing for sure, that black will never be able to push e5 because then you would give up the square of d5. So mm -hmm. when you have this thought, it's comforting because then you can play f4 at some point without any worry because you can just push this one. Because sometimes when the bishop is on g3 or e3, uh, black will try to stop it by playing e5 but now we know that d5 is there for us to grab so it makes exactly. yeah it makes e5 a little bit um a little bit uninteresting for for black in this position but i would say any strategical choice here for fitted i think it's 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 pretty good you can play bishop e3 you can play g4 um what else can you play here mm, no probably everything is fine i mean i really like this g4 uh what else can we do we can maybe just go king b1 king b1 and be also like... if you're feeling mm. playing some safe move right king b1 <laughs> yeah. yeah it's also pretty nice so wow okay so fit is, is still trying to figure this out and i would like to yeah. switch to the game that we haven't seen at all uh this one it's been Tan Zongi, the leader of the tournament versus Anna Muzichuk, which 
is a very interesting approach by Tan Zong Yi. So, um, yeah, give what a d5. Is this opening? The normal, okay. The bishop d3, and then you just play um, a fianchero oh. with b3 mm -hmm. and castle and bishop b2. Actually, a very solid approach. I mean, it's not biting, right? It's not like biting to your opponent's <laughs> flesh right away, but it's, it's yeah. a very solid one. Bishop b7 and then knight bd2 and rook c8, a3, yeah, calmly. This is like the reverse, um, how do you call it? The reverse queen's gambit, yeah? Like yeah, with yeah. This a3. White is black. Like, well, white <laughs> is black, yeah, just, just reverse color. So bishop e7, knight e5, takes, takes. And this is, I've been bringing this up so many times whenever I see this type of structure, that how mm -hmm. Tan Zongi is known for her knowledge in the cosbot structure mm. and she is such a clever player and she has also of course a whole team behind her that recommending her all the openings position that she will be very comfortable with so sometimes she got some, this cosbot structure when she was uh when she played with the black pieces but she likes having this totally and then putting the knight on d3 and then you know just just trying this structure like like half yeah. open structure so yeah. i think this is also a very very clever strategy by tan Zongi when you're just going for the position that you're very familiar with regardless of how the openings were started right and then yeah you you already know every single thing uh what to do in that type of position so this helps a lot in terms of time management as well and we can see in the time situation here Tanzongi is up uh, 25 minutes ahead of Anna Muzichuk so this tells something yeah um I yeah I mean I myself like this kind of position these Karlbat structures they're just extremely hard to play I feel like you really need to be an expert in them to know how they play them perfectly mm -hmm. and like you said Tan Tan just does the job, yeah. And this queen g4, g6, like when I first saw the position, it kind of reminded me of some kind of French slash Karakan. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, kind of structures that yes. can be achieved from these kind of positions. Mm -hmm. And I am always scared with black when I have to go g6. And usually then I have to short castle and this bishop on b2, you know, uh, one day. Especially if black wants to open up this position, has to go f6 or something. Um, it's it's not very um, pleasant for black. So this a5 from Anna, I like very much, you know, playing, opening the position on that side. But, you know, I would just pick white as an easier player of to, course. to play here, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, white white has a pleasant position here and and black is always in a dilemma whether she should castle at this point or she should delay. But if she's delaying the castle and which what Anna has been doing so far in the first uh, in the in the last few moves, uh eventually black will um will not have enough waiting moves to make. Yeah, and then eventually I think the king has to has to resort somewhere else, whether it is a castle or a fake castle, we're blinking a fate maybe or something like that. But mm. but I agree that white has more choices here and then white is more flexible. Um eventually white will just attack the king's side no matter what. Mm -hmm. Even if the king is not castled or if, if the king is, is still in yeah, the center. I feel like H4 H5 mm. is coming, it's coming and yeah. I would be scared. <laughs> I would be very scared about it. Yeah, so it is also possible that that Anna is waiting for this to be moved so that she can play um, H5, H5 yeah. itself and having the king still in the center. Um, yeah. Somehow putting some pieces on the king side to protect all the pawns, especially on G6, because after the H4, H5, G6 can be like the potential of target of attack. So yes, but I like how Tanzongi has approached the game against Anna because I'm sure they have played many times against each other and um, this approach is so nice like i might actually copy it to my own repertoire i'm i'm an info player but i occasionally play d4 as well and this is like a very safe approach um forget about london 
<laughs> because I'm sure many in the chats, um, they <laughs> like to play D4 just because they can just play London and then they don't have yeah. to think for the next 10 moves because the London moves are interchangeable. Uh, but this is also a very solid approach, an alternative to London. And uh, you can play the next how many moves, like 10 moves as well, without having to think. You just have to go for this type of setup. And then you mm -hmm. go for knight e5. And then it is up to your opponent whether or not d4 will be taken. But eventually yeah. you can also have another option of uh, having f4. This is also another idea in, the type, in this type of situation. Or if c takes d4, e d4 like what's in the game, then maybe f4 is not as tempting as it used to. So you can play some other approach. But yeah, this position is definitely already a dream to, to get as white pieces. Yeah. I like it. I very much like it, especially I actually played something similar against Anna. So I was black, Anna was white and she just pushed H4, H5 at some point and I collapsed immediately. Mm -hmm. So it's very interesting. And um, yeah, I'm very excited to see how Anna will handle this position so I can learn something from her maybe, you know. Castle just happened. So mm. Anna is not delaying the castle anymore. But <laughs> now here comes H4, right? Is there anything else um... you want to play? No, I really want to go H4, honestly. Like, I just want to push this pawn <laughs> as far as possible. Exactly. I think it is the, the right time, too. And, um, oh, if I could have a position with bishop d4 and c3 and just mm. cement it like that, mm -hmm. I would be very happy to have this h4, g3, followed by king g2 and rook h1. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because now... Opening up the G three King G two might be fine, but I don't like yeah. this bishop eyeing over this yeah, diagonal. Exactly, D four sacrifice could be coming, so we need to be careful about it. Right. Yes, but unfortunately, if I play Bishop D four, it means that I leave the protection on B four for my queen, so I cannot do it yet. So yeah, I think it's 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 really um, interesting to start this position with H four, and try for this yeah. attack. Um, I'm just thinking if Black has a very good reaction to h4. Yeah, let, let's let's put it on the board maybe mm -hmm. so we can see if Black can play h5. Otherwise, I don't see a very clear way. Yeah, let's say we go to g3. So maybe in the future we try some bishop g uh, g6. Yeah, sometime. Oh, Not if the yet, queen goes but... here, then this might be hanging. Yeah. Yeah, but that's that's what I wonder. Is that ah, you scary? want to sack here? Can I sack? I want to sack. I know. think I think like, you can. Why not? Here you can take this one first, or you can also go here immediately and game over. <laughs> Maybe not. Wait, there is, is it here. game over? <laughs> there is there is queen here, but yeah, that, that's. Is... I, but oh, first first I go queen eight six king j eight, and then I take queen e six. Oh, so in clever. the next move, I will I will push the e pawn because the bishop is on b2 and this bishop is a beast yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if you have to go king g7 maybe though that's that's my worry somehow but i don't care like if i open up the b2, <laughs> b2 bishop i'm just i'm just the happiest person alive yeah 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 you can you can play anything with the queen because then this bishop will be open after e6 so, oh sorry sorry d5 is not hanging what am i talking about bishop is seven is there <laughs> Let's not give the queen Let's not yet. give the queen yet. Yeah, so if I want to move the queen, it has to be h3. But okay, at least there is queen g3 next move, yeah? Yeah, I mean, in worst case, I can also go bishop c1 in this case, because b queen h6 or bishop h6 can be dangerous. Yeah, or but not, maybe not. But maybe okay, not. fortunately, the queen is not forced to move in this position. At least you have this rook yeah. 7 idea. I think you for also example, have knight yeah. g5 idea. I think if this happens, then you have to go for it. So maybe after h4. Um, the question is, even if you get your, your pawn to h6, it's just going to close the position. Yeah, so... I, I want to go to just to h5 and then take on g6 and again somehow uh, mm. sacrifice something if possible. But of course you have to prepare it. It's not so easy. Yeah? Okay, so let me try to prepare it in such a way that I don't mm -hmm. understand to what to do. Let's let's play, okay, after h4, let's play rook e8. You play okay. h5, Yeah. then I put my bishop here. 
And now he starts thinking about the sacrifice, <laughs> but it doesn't work. Once you put the bishop on g7 and my my bishop is just cemented on b2, then it mm -hmm. doesn't work. Yeah. But it's still nice not, for white yeah. here, yeah? Still nice for white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nice, but yes, then you ask yourself, wait, how oh. am I continuing? Yeah. Maybe this, this is what we want, and then play c3 and then open up with this. Because now if you take take okay, yeah. the bishop goes. You cannot here. do that, yeah. Yeah, then we can take now I'm this, winning, yeah? I think. Yeah. And then just sacrifice like this and then this I, is winning. I think this should be winning somehow. We should be mm -hmm. winning. Yeah, because we have this and this. How oh, do yeah, you stop sure. both, yeah? Yeah. No, for sure, this, this should be winning. Yeah, this should be winning. Okay, so, but rook a e1 is played. Um, hmm. Aha, uh -huh, now I understand. Maybe. Am I understanding this? <laughs> um, it's really hard to understand this rook a e1 because you're not really preventing, I mean, you, you don't have to prevent f6 or f5 anyway because no. this is hanging. So. But you want to go, I guess, rook lift. Yeah, you want to go rook, eight, three, rook lift, e3, yeah, rook like h3 these, at some yeah. point. But so, I guess it's so like just this, a, yeah. this maybe here and then rook goes here. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what she's planning with this rook a e one. Like, did I have to go with this one? Was that was yeah? I mean, maybe she also wants to open a file in the future with f four f five. So that's why she's leaving the one on f one. Makes sense. But how am I moving the knight so I can go to h3, though? You want to go h4, knight g5? Okay, yeah. I mean, yeah, everything looks so good for white, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, also, maybe this one is a preparation for knight d4. Yeah, I was thinking oh, yeah. that as well, but... Yeah, yeah, I could be, absolutely could be, yeah. Like, especially because some knight e6 can happen then. And then you have this beautiful bishop on b2. I just want to open it up, you know. I just want it to be free on the diagonal. Right. Well, Tan Zongi has uh, plenty of comfortable choices here. But I'd like to update us also on the game before we take our first break. Because we haven't seen this game at all. It's between uh, Kuro Hampi versus Litingji, which looked to me... Like King's Indian? King's Indian. Uh, yeah, I wanted to go to into. this one before because it's so surprising to see King's Indian in candidates, I feel like. Um, but again, the Tinger is seconded by Raja Boff. And we know why <laughs> King's Indian is on the board. Uh, King h8, knight e1. This is a, a quiet approach, yeah? Uh, mm -hmm. For white to play in the King's Indian and then meeting f5 with f4 it takes mm -hmm. f4 takes an h6 and this is the current position and both players have similar time situations right now uh litinja has a slightly more time but i think it's pretty much the same and what would you do here if you were white laura um yeah, I would ask myself what does black really plan to do in the next moves this is g5 a four threat? Is this something that black is is planning right now with this h6? Or was he just stopping bishop g5? I don't know. I always like white positions. It's just much more space, but it's so easy to make mistakes. Um, let's think. What do I want? If I go queen d2, which is a very logical move, does, does black play g5? Do we go king h7? I don't know. I, I'm I just, just wondering. G5, yeah? yeah. And, and after bishop g3, you're going f4, yeah. And then just put the knight on here. Yeah, now this looks something nice for black. For so black, this is yeah. something we don't want to achieve, yeah? So we have to we have to think what to do against it. I want I, If I could, I would go e5 or c5 immediately, but e5 and nor c5 just work at this point so maybe just preventing something like bishop g3 for starters and not after, to... after g5 let's say i wanted to take on f5 but after mm -hmm. knight f5 i'm not sure okay like i'm starting to play passively but bishop f2 And if I play, okay, I'll just play an ID5. Hmm, okay. 
And if I take knight e5, bishop e5, and play something like knight e4, basically I didn't achieve anything great, yeah, I think. <laughs> or also, I should be careful about the b2 pawn, so... I mean, yeah, I feel like black is doing well in the original position, yeah? Mm -hmm, I mean, mm -hmm. he, she has no worries. Like, what would you play instead of uh, bishop g3? Yeah. Yeah. Um... Should we go bishop e3 maybe? So we could play c5 soon, if it's possible. I or think that... I'm more to like a concrete um, mm. push, um, yeah, uh, position here. So maybe I'll take this one, okay. and I think you'll take with the with the knight, right? Okay. Yeah. And um, I might actually play something like bishop g4. Hmm. Because it looks like, okay, when you play g5, I don't mind at all, because then, uh, is there any tactics here? Uh, tactics, yeah, should be, eh? or where are we moving? No, maybe there are no tactics. Maybe, maybe there's no tactics, yeah, but... Um... um... Yeah, but it's okay. Even if we just move the bishop, I think I white has no problem now. Yeah, but okay. Let me let me. Can can I consider taking on f five and then immediately going c five to just to do something for fun? Mm. Interesting. So if I play g five, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's say I just. Okay, wait. I have to think in this position. I actually have to calculate, so I cannot just rely on my intuition at this point. Okay. Okay, let's say I move bishop d2, you take on c5, and now it's just... Better for black, I guess. <sighs> yeah, this doesn't work. Yeah, this g5 is a very strong idea, I think. Mm -hmm. In general, yeah. In general, so let's let's figure this out. But after h six, um, how are we going to continue in this position? <laughs> I don't know. I think what you suggested is completely fine. Like taking on f five and trying to just kind of be neutral. And also, Humpy has been spending a lot of time, so she's not yeah. really prepared, yeah? So, just okay, just wonder, like, how much time um, Humpy is currently taking for the next move. So, she's mm. been thinking for 17 minutes uh, for yeah, her coming which, moves. Yeah, which tells you how, how difficult it must be for her to figure out now what's the right way. Right. Well, it is going to be interesting. I actually... Uh, I really will keep an eye on this game because it's uh I want to see which strategy that that she will use in order to face g5 as a as a threat uh, on black's next move. But um this game between Fidet versus Alireza I, I want to quickly take a look because um in the eval bar we have it's uh it's showing how Fidet is so much ahead in evaluation um wow. because wow. i don't know for me taking on f2 i'll come back to our analysis <laughs> board it's not an option at all have especially having my king still in the center that's why when i suggested g4 i, yeah. I was thinking like okay maybe you just castle and then uh, i think this is what we analyze after this yeah. and then knight goes here because in my mind yeah. you shouldn't touch this f2 move uh, f2 pawn at all yeah it's suspicious. It's it uh, is very suspicious. Highly suspicious. And oh. this is actually what Ali Reza did in the game. He took on F2. So is he going tilted, Laura? Especially <laughs> after after what happened yesterday. Oh. In the, in, in, yeah, he has like he had one second left on the clock before he blundered King Tanks mm -hmm. D3. If you remember mm -hmm. that. Where, yeah, that I remember. Yeah, yeah, where he should have played rook d8 and taking d3 with the rook and keeping uh, the guard of the g3 pawn with the king on e3. And now he just... First, something that I wouldn't be able to to 
explain to my students how <laughs> a very strong grandmaster played the queen moves three <laughs> times actually one two three yeah and now four yeah four yeah it should be move of, with queen yeah. it should be like yeah. violating the opening principle there is and then taking this pawn when the pieces are not developed yet and also the king is still in the center so for all the chats out there even even without the eval bar yeah we can actually <laughs> tell that something something is really really wrong in the in the black's position but of course we did has to play all the yeah right prove continuation it, yeah. Yeah, prove it that this pawn is just a sacrifice pawn but i'm just yeah i'm just i'm just wondering what alivreza had in mind maybe he mm. he was like okay i'm not i'm done i'm 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 done i'm done i just take this pawn prove it to me and then show me like it is uh really a win or not but i mean look at this position what would you play laura well, first move that comes in mind is, of course, bishop e3, because exactly. I don't want to let this queen back to b6, mm -hmm. because then black achieved what he wanted. Yeah, he just took the pawn and got got away with it. So first move to think about is bishop, bishop e3, and then black all has two responses, yeah, which is queen h4 or queen g2, but I believe only queen h4 is it's working. a good one. Mm -hmm. And also, <laughs> maybe he was secretly hoping that the game would continue <laughs> like after yeah. bishop e3 here and then you make repetition like this which <laughs> i highly doubt that it's going to happen oh anyway. no no it's not gonna for happen. sure oh, not for it's sure not gonna not. happen yeah like all this it repetition, is repetition mm -hmm. yeah. so after queen um, f2 yes i like this bishop e3 because uh as you mentioned the queen shouldn't go back to b6 so at least we cornered this queen to the other side of the board but now how to continue this one yeah, now, now we ask ourselves some questions like the queen is on h4, what does it do? Can I just go h3 or something? Or or maybe I don't even need to go for that. Maybe I can just go rook df1. Uh -huh. You want to trap the queen. I want that you queen. You want to trap the queen, <laughs> right. And but let's say h6, I play h6 yes. Yeah. And now I can think about something like g5. Okay, I am getting very ambitious here but this requires a lot of calculation i'm just thinking you know it's easy to sacrifice my mm -hmm. pawns that are not mine so g5 you have to think about knight e4 you have to think about taking you have to yeah yeah this move is always in question um, you have to find the the right way to either win the queen or win something else. So I'm not sure if that's working. It just looks very interesting. Um, but I guess g5 is not the right way move. Yeah, yet. I don't think so. Um, mm. So in this position, let's let's move back after bishop e3, queen h4. Or maybe you, mm, if I play g5 right away, you play knight e4. But then, yeah, if take takes, yeah, okay, it's interesting. Because now also, uh, yeah, Fidit has to be extra concrete here. Because mm -hmm. if you give time for knight actually to go e5 without any any worry, then it's it's posing some, pro some problems. So I think in a way, I understand this move by Al Reza, queen takes f2, it's a big risk. It's a really, big really risk, big risk, yeah. but it's also uh, it's also demanding fitted to play extra concrete and not to let it go, because I'm sure he has something in mind. He 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 played g4. He he should have planned this ahead. And uh, is there anything beside bishop e3? Yeah, I don't think that Vidit was actually considering black taking on f2. That's why he's also thinking much now because this is just. E mm. five. This is yeah. You don't play that. What e five? E five. Now? Yeah. You have to take with the pawn, and um, I can take it back like this. And um, just maybe opening up the position. I don't know. Okay, rook d eight is there, but this is just an an idea still because I just want to show my idea that after e five, if mm -hmm. you take, then I'll just no. I don't have to take it. I can just play bishop b five immediately. And then oh, the you're, you're tricking me this way. Okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I just want to open up the center, or also in this position, I can I can start with uh I can start with yeah. this. 
I was thinking about that, yeah, because Knight now has to go to d7, I guess. Oh, yeah, Otherwise... I think g5 is the move, actually. Yeah, this looks very nice. So, knight d7, you at least you have this, right? Yeah, but and, I want more. <laughs> and open up the center and the king yeah. cannot cost. I mean, I think this is enough. Um, if knight g8... Okay, we have to be careful if taking this, there's rook d8. Um, now maybe we can play here and then possibly trapping the... Mm -hmm. trapping the queen at some point somehow like, yeah I, even like this maybe I don't know this and then rook here yeah I mean this queen is terrible yeah the queen so... the queen will eventually be trapped <laughs> I'm sure of it because there's see you, you, there are no other pieces like helping the queen at all so I think I like this idea g5 start with mm -hmm. g5 and how I like it are you too. going to stop it Knight d7, you can play this uh, too, the same idea. Or I also like this idea, just take on this one. Because you have to take the bishop, I guess. Otherwise, bishop g3, and then I'll take the, the knight. Or even if rook here, I have this. So, so I think you have to take the bishop, and after this, and then you have this. And then somehow open, open up the center. Maybe knight d5. For sure, you can go crazy in this position. Mm. Oh, Queen's seven. Yeah, Queen's I'm seven. already looking at rook f1, rook f7, just, you know, I just want to sacrifice ah, everything. Exactly. Many... No, it doesn't work. But yeah, Queen's seven looks good. Queen's but... seven or yeah, anything so... else. Yeah. Many things, yeah. actually, yeah. Just just to to start it with, Queen's seven looks just nice. Yeah, so I don't know. Uh, this could be... I I feel like there's not only one move here. I don't yeah. know. There are many moves that make this position better or you know make it just take advantage mm -hmm. but one one might be you know winning already yeah one might be like the force win till the end yeah mm -hmm. wow and uh nice wow, yeah this is crazy and Persia only spending 20 minutes to get to this position is kind of yeah you're right did he really just say you know what i don't want to do this anymore I'm done. I, I don't, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just in Toronto here chilling, yeah. Um. <laughs> but maybe because he's still upset of what happened yesterday too, because um yeah, he was very close to drawing the game and maybe that's been what he has in mind, like okay, the game will be drawn anyway, but somehow he just he just lost control, especially when he had like mm. one second left on the clock. He was just playing just by increment and um blundered in the but, last yeah 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 but why did he go for sicilian today then couldn't he went go for something more calm you know just to solidate just to stop the bleeding especially uh, he must have been upset yeah yes yeah that's a very good question yeah i'm wondering i'm wondering what he has in his mind because we we never know uh <laughs> how because every player has its own uh mechanism in coping with losses mm -hmm. and maybe he's not one of the best ones um we see players like fabiano caruana who actually mm -hmm. come back from losses and then you know as if there's nothing happened we also saw a player like the pragnananda how he lost against gukash um yeah. And then just came back strong, winning the game against Fidit afterwards, and then almost won against uh, Ian Hamamniachi, as if as if he didn't suffer any loss against Gukesh in such a manner. So yeah, every person has different coping mechanism, and maybe um, Ali Reza is not doing it well in these candidates. But I hope in the second half of the tournament he would somehow bounce back and play his best chess because he's known as a very creative and interesting player mm -hmm. so yeah we'll see so g5 in this position laura is yeah going to i be, mean i think it's, it's going oh, to be our bet yeah yeah i'm i'm looking at the chat you know and they're and they're being very um supportive but they really like the move e5 you suggested e5. move e5 yeah and they really like it they say that apparently you cannot take on e5 which I don't like. So you cannot take with e5. So if it's like this, 
Yeah, what's the move? Do we go bishop e3 or bishop e5 now? Ah, bishop e3. If you go here, then you go here, and then you take and mate on d7. Oh, yeah. It's the forcing, yeah. it's the forcing mate now. Now I got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I didn't think about bishop e3 after e5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's now, now it all makes sense. Yeah, e5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So now if the knight moves somewhere, so I guess d7. Yeah, if knight moves to d7. Um, we, we we can go bishop b3 again and just take with a pawn on d6, right? Or something like that, right? Like this, like this. Maybe. Uh, mm. Man, I really want to sack, sack, sack everything, you know? <laughs> yeah, me too. It just feels like I need to do it, yeah. It's it feels like position. it feels like in this position, maybe I can sack it here. Bishop G, Bishop B five, but already or or do you want to take just with the pawn on D six first and then sack the next move? You know, so C seven square is um there is will there be, for you. The thing is, there will be an easy win, Laura. I want I want a hard win. <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. Something that I love that. <laughs> I appreciate that uh, so much. Really, really forcing. So, <laughs> or also, also. Ah, why not we do this? Okay. And then knight e4 and take with the knight. Oh, and then oh we have, I like that. We have full control over d file. So where oh. does this queen go? Back to the e Yeah, go, let's go back. Okay, and... I'll, I'll 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 be a bit no, I want to be I want to be a bit flashy <laughs> by taking with the queen, but it doesn't work. It's not made yeah. because after this this the king can move to f8 a oh, lot. Mm. But so okay, let's 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 be normal, yeah, and then take it with the knight and you have to take it. And after mm -hmm. this Oh, uh, what to do here? Okay, yeah. knight is he's hanging. This looks terrible. This looks really terrible. This... Oh, e5 played. Oh, he played e5. Well done, he did. Well oh, done, he did. That's awesome. Vidit is on fire. Yeah. I'm not siding with anyone in this position, but I just want to see like the best of chess. And so far, uh, and so far Ali Reza is not showing it, and. The move like queen takes f2, it's ought to be punished, Laura. And mm -hmm. it's a good thing that uh, that Fidit, um found this e5 move. And I think it's it's not very hard for him to find it. I think he's been taking his time to double check, triple check all the variations. Um, but it's just to show like in this type of, of tournament, especially where all the top level players are currently participating in, you cannot make an impulsive decision. Like mm -hmm. Queen F2 wouldn't ha have crossed my mind at all when I played G4, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. of course, you know it's, it's 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 some sort of like a poisonous spawn. It's not even poisonous anymore. You know, it's just like if you eat it, you're dead. You 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 just go die, because <laughs> because sometimes we know this this variation right where where this um where this uh term poisonous or poison pawn stands yeah. from that is the, the night of but this is really poisonous because then you have to deal with many sort of attacks like after mm -hmm. here here and then queen d2 or f4 yeah and then yeah, like this yeah. this is poisonous pawn <laughs> yeah but yeah. but this is still playable position for actually is it e6 first i'm not sure actually something like this this and then this mm -hmm. and then queen d2 and then takes because mm -hmm. This is still like some players and some there are still many games like this. And I mean, black can still play this position. It's not that black will immediately lose. It's just that uh, the reason why white gives up this pawn is because then white will accelerate so many initiatives that, that black has to be very careful of. But this one, the game between um, Feed It versus Ali Reza, the F2 pawn is just, it's not poisonous anymore. It's just like dying, not dying pawn. It's like... <laughs> You eat it, you die. That's all. <laughs> that's the right one. It's like, yeah, you eat it, you die. That's, I think, the best description you could give it. Um, <laughs> E5 is the death of you, yeah? Yeah, so... <laughs> oh, it's crazy. We're going to see um, this one for sure, but there is one game that might finish anytime soon. I was going to take a break, but let's go for this... Um, game between Ian and Fabi, which is yeah. a very interesting from the start <laughs> until the end. <laughs> the and... most interesting one indeed. Oh wow, they came so far. Yeah. And it's then... already moved 40. Oh, they're doing so well. Yeah. And then draw offer will come up anytime soon and then we'll see the half-half yeah. happening after their name. 
So can, can we just see how they mm -hmm. exchange the rooks? So I just wonder. Yeah, they keep doing this. Oh, a five was played. Actually. Yeah. Oh, okay. So all yeah. these dance with the rook and the bishop, <laughs> and then again oh, another oh, dance. Oh, why did they not? Why did they not get three times a petition? Um, and wasn't it already? This is the thing. This is the thing to Laura in the top level, uh, tournament or <laughs> players like this, especially in the open section. This is what we called with the player's ego. <laughs> okay yeah so i don't know i don't know about the personal relationship between these two right they can just okay, easily yeah. offer draw and repetition and, and and many things but also if you if you can uh stay away from communicating with your opponent as possible yeah. and you can do that and this is a position or a game that's you, you can easily reach um 40th move without any mm. problem and then yeah that's just true, a draw that's like, like this yeah and then okay this is mutually agreed and the yeah. four this was our i think we predicted on the spot that this was going to end um within like okay almost two hours but it's because they have to play for uh 40 moves but yeah it's eventually a draw yeah um i mm -hmm. for sure no the we i i was very much excited about this game but um yeah the opening was uh interesting choice from from both of them so yeah. Especially because yesterday we talked about that Nepomnish is going for a win, so for some kind of tricky positions with white and consolidating with black. So um, I was a bit surprised by this opening. But you know, they both they all need breaks and they all need breaks, they're also yeah. yeah. Okay, so well we still have seven games going on, Laura, in the uh three games in the open section and all the games in the women's sections are still playing at the moment and I want to come back to Fidit versus Virugia, but I think it is a perfect time for us to play, not to play, but to take <laughs> our quick break uh, before we continue commentating on other games. So yeah. Laura and Irene will be back after a few minutes. Don't go anywhere, guys. I will give you um, the multi-board view of the Open so you can keep tracking on what happened between uh, Fidit versus Virugia. We'll be back after a few minutes.
Hello everyone, welcome back to our commentary of the candidates open and women section for round number six and we've seen so many interesting games going on so far there's only one game that's finished at the moment that's between Ian Apomnaichi versus Fabiano Caruana no shocking there but what is shocking <laughs> is uh, the game between Fidit versus Ali Reza which we'll see now <laughs> so we saw the position of the e5 and the pawn on on after was the bomb pawn yeah like it's very suspicious to be taken and yet Alreza took it and now Fidit delivered the attack by playing e5 and Alreza retreated the knight to d7 and Fidit took on d6 just like that Ooh, Laura <laughs> he took on d6 very fast now we were considering some different lines with uh was it bishop Bishop e3, e3, yeah, bishop e3, or e4, yeah, everything. Well. Yeah, so I actually wonder if, if our if our move yeah, is if... actually a, a good move <laughs> there, that instead of here, I, I like this idea, actually, having the bishop on this side of yeah. the board, and after that, knight e4, just to bring all your pieces. But what what Fidit didn't like in this position? Um, because... I mean, I guess... First of all, instead of bishop uh, queen h4, queen g2 might have been what stopped him in the first place. Maybe. So after e5, uh, knight d7, if I play bishop e3, hmm. queen g2, yeah? Oh, queen g2. Oh, I saw. Oh, they don't like it. I know, I just advantage. go rook g1. Yeah, rook g1. I, 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 thought, I thought that I can go to, like with this, queen to d5, this, but there's just knights on c And this, so. yeah? And trap yeah, no, this doesn't something work. Something like this, yeah? Yeah, so... Yeah, so... After bishop e3, if queen h4, um, I'd like to move the bishop back to g5 like this, and after queen f2, and I'd like to go knight e4. Yeah, oh, this is equally yeah. good. This is equally good. This is still very much. Um, yeah, Pidit has so many options to continue the game in a good manner. So he chose to play just a simple e takes d6, which I think um, oh. computer likes it. Yeah, it, it <laughs> maintained the position. I mean, just look at this one. It's plus five. It's wow. sad. It's sad to see a, a player like Perugia to have this type of position in a classical game. Yeah, if it was like a bullet or blitz games, maybe we know why. But this is classical. You have all the time in the world to think and ponder about your decision. And this is happening just after move 15. So it's a good day. At the office for mm. Fidit for sure. And I'm just wondering what Ali Reza has in mind um until he got his um until he got himself into such a position. Yeah, I that's very surprising, isn't it? It is. It is I, I didn't we predict draw for this game? Yeah. Or I, I, <laughs> I guess don't I even predicted remember. it because <laughs> Fidit will be going quite solid and Yeah. But I predicted too, but like Ferruja just doesn't want to be solid, it seems. Like he wants to have decisive results here. It's very interesting. Maybe maybe he's having some trouble in personal life or or you never know what's like behind these players, you know? So it's very interesting the opening he plays and the approach he has even after yesterday's loss. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah this queen f2 is just a shock for me as well queen f2 and I he moved now to queen b6 so how many times have we moved the oh queen my now? gosh yes yes somebody has to make um some g queen counter yeah or recap of of this game or i think somebody will also uh focusing on how many times the queen has moved like from d8 to b6 back to d8 back to b6 mm -hmm. back uh, going to f2 and then now go back to b6 so b6 has been the post for the queen so far wherever you go you ha you always have to come back to b6 um but okay how to, how we continue this position this is a very fun position for white to keep playing on yeah there's net d5 idea at some point oh, maybe bishop oh, f3 nice. now yeah just opening up with rook h e1 letter with knight d5 that could be the follow-up, but I think the reason why bishop, queen b6 is now being played is because okay, you're a bit worried about bishop e3, uh, which exactly. you can do it now or not. Oh, I was thinking 
bishop f3 castle and then this is how you're going to trap the queen because <laughs> after bishop f3 it looks like oh white sorry black has to um put the king into safety as soon as possible but eventually if he did that bishop e3 comes and then it's it comes as a shock and you cannot even yeah, you can cover it you can cover it with the knight but it's only like within a move and it's a resignable position so for sure i like this bishop f3 i think follow up uh by rook h e1 with or without knight d5 i mean this idea is just totally um yeah ridiculous terrible good, I guess. yeah it looks terrible uh, black is like, busted yeah what do, what does black even try to do at this point like g6 uh before what is even the the only possible try you know yeah g6 i'll just go here yeah and then okay after bishop this, g7 and you're just going 95 and you're just c7, crushing oof. me wow yeah and you're just crushing me yeah and if the king somehow moves like this then we can <laughs> oh i mean i mean bishop e3 is the idea if if d8 is somehow uh, occupied yeah bishop e3 is always the idea but you cannot always keep the king in the center too it's just gonna be just very very dangerous yeah bishop f3 I mean, rookie one yeah. it's only a matter of time when we see resignation i think i think Firuja probably will not to play want to play this game for too long yeah yeah that's that's actually also another strategy like if you realize that you're losing anyway now or the next two hours it's better to just uh stop the suffering come back to your hotel room yeah and then get ready for the next one yeah okay yeah get get a pizza or some comfort food and move <laughs> on yeah <laughs> right well of course we will keep coming back to this game because this is i think this will be one of the upsets of the round uh, meanwhile, uh, we have an interesting development happening on the board between Van Zongyi versus uh, Anna Muzichuk because we talk about this H4 idea, which mm -hmm. eventually happened. And after yes. Rook AE1, AB, yeah. AB, Rook A4, and there you go, H4. Oh, yes. And Here after Rook A4, H5, Rook takes B4, wow. Knight D4. Knight Wait, we D4. sacrifice? <laughs> let's what? figure this out this is interesting so if you take on b2 i guess i first take on g6 with a you pawn. want to take you you just want to sacrifice anything on g6 yeah like like, like okay if this one you you have options of taking on e6 anyway yeah. if this one then you can just take take or 96 first maybe because then we're checkmating even but yeah also this okay yeah let's continue and then rookie three yes yeah the thing is if 96 first the queen can go to e8 and stopping yeah, it. Yeah. so after this we're and now same. just 96 so you're hitting the queen and mm. also threatening this and at some point if needed b rookie you know, three, rookie but, yeah. three, rookie three. so poison oh, wow. bishop there <laughs> poison bishop on b2 poisoned bishop poisoned pieces today everywhere right yeah yeah well interesting okay. interesting development I, I really like how the game has turned and tanzongi is always on the driver's seat on this game and playing a very very good chess Yes, she's been playing great the whole tournament so far. And Anna, we've seen her being a bit shaky with these winning positions. And this is just not like we we said. We mm -hmm. said it, it's much easier to play for white today. And this this bishop sacrifice just proves yeah. how hard that position is for black. And even though white sacrificed the pawn on b4, I feel like white is in in a driver seat like even more than driver seat yeah exactly exactly and also if needed be uh if you don't take my bishop right now this bishop can actually switch to c1 and then potentially joining the party mm -hmm. yeah bring all your pieces to the party <laughs> it's uh and have have fun together like that <laughs> well this this game uh i have a big feeling that uh yeah tanzongi will score another win here yeah, honestly, even by time, we see Anna is more than 30 minutes down, which is a lot of time. And they're on move 20. So yeah. 20 moves for her to even make the time control. Mm -hmm. Anna is But I have a trouble. feeling, mm -hmm. yeah, I have a feeling this game might might end sooner even, maybe. Yeah, yeah. 
that's possible. We also, okay, cool. if you remember the game between Tan Zongyi versus Fai Shali, where Tan Zongyi just mm -hmm. oh, killed yeah. the king's side with the knight dons, the, this maneuvering of the knights from the mm. queen's side and somehow switched them Beautiful. all to the king's side. And then with g4, g5, queen h5 and so on, it's like it's such a good attacking game, but very instru instructive one too, because it started out as a thematic queen's gambit accepted position with cars, but again, the structure that she's very familiar with. And then he, she continued and ended it in a very uh, classical manner, like really giving no chance for black. And we can see um, another example in Tanzongi's game in two days round against Adam Muzijuk. It's as if, to be honest, it's just like, uh, it's all good prep. Like, again, the, the, the opening was not like very aggressive one. It, like what I said, it's not like immediately biting your opponent's flesh, mm. but... You just keep everything under control, you develop your pieces, and then it's up to Black who is trying to find which variation that she's going to play. But eventually, we come up to this setup, which is very, very comfortable for, for White to play around. And Anna is, uh, is in big trouble now. Well, let's think about what is the move for her right now, because, okay, taking the bishop is... Um, GG's. <laughs> what about I bishop guess. c5, yeah? Like, just for example. to get the... Yeah. Bishop c5, um, let's let's get this because we, we would like to have some uh, sacrifice yeah. on the g6. Yeah. So if this one takes, yeah, we I think we can just keep taking. Okay, this this will be the same story, I guess. Or maybe it's okay, now, different. Now we have e7 square, so... Yeah, but no, now rook comes, yeah? Yeah, this is... this. Yeah, <laughs> just, yeah, I mean, this rookie one was such a strong move just because of this rook lift. If you take this, I'll take this one first so yeah. that no one is, is covering the h3 check. Wow, and what about if we guard the g6 pawn with queen e8, for example? Okay, this seems like a good approach. Ah, maybe, maybe, ah, wait, wait, wait. Okay, at the very least, I'd like to play bishop c3 first, just not to let my bishop and pre like that. And if you play rook here, yeah. okay, at the very least, again, I have this. And um, I like you to... You want to push my rook? Yeah, push your rook and then take on e6 and then gain some material on d7, for example. Mm, so, but That's a lovely idea. But, but of course, there should be some other things to here, like... Uh, I think black black should even maybe sacrifice the rook um for the knight because this knight on d4 is so so strong that I have a feeling black has to give it up. Maybe yeah eventually but now when when the knight is is uh, out of the board uh white can choose to switch the play to the yeah. to the queen side yeah and then maybe put a rook like something like this. Uh, pressuring this pawn because again around this side the around the king side white is already uh, dominated so if white can play it around uh, via the queen side then i think it's just going to be like full domination from white side and also materially speaking white is already an exchange up so yeah i think any alternative that black might play in this position is going to be a really hard decision to make because um in one way or another, Black has to make some sort of a concessions. Yeah. Um, hmm, just this... I love White's position, so I I don't feel there's a lot of hope for Anna. Like, Tan really needs to play this very badly to, to not win this, I feel like. she, But she's doing such a tremendous job playing this tournament yep. that I just believe... I believe in her. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's wait for this one um, because uh, Anna is still thinking of mm -hmm. her. Oh, move. only twenty minutes left. Only oh, twenty yeah. minutes, twenty-three minutes left. But she will have uh, increment every single move, so she's gonna be quite fine. Yeah. But let's switch to the game um, between Ragnarander versus Abasov because uh, looks like there are some trades already happening on the board. So we saw. The position up to queen b8 and bishop e2 castle castle bishop f6 pressuring on d4 and then bishop e3 knight e7 knight c5 and giving up this bishop mm. and after knight f5 
rook a b1 e5 mm -hmm. d5 bishop e5 and this is the current position oof what what's your what's your <laughs> take on this position laura oh um so first of all we got the knight to c5 which is amazing mm -hmm. that's what we want to do and this knight is now such a great knight but we gave up this e2 bishop and maybe we, we're giving up the e3 bishop as well so i don't like the idea of my opponent has uh having bishop pair against me mm -hmm. so you'd like to and, take on e5 um you, we have to calculate it we have I, don't, to calculate. I mean I, I don't know if i want to maybe i just want to move my bishop <laughs> or you we can also move the rook first attacking this one because okay. then uh if we take the bishop immediately at least the queen is protecting the pawn so here you are asking this question to your opponent like how are you going to protect this d5 mm. pawn maybe by playing rook d8 but then mm -hmm. this rook is kind of uh how to say alone <laughs> you can actually think for some move like bishop g5 too yeah and oh, then yeah. attacking both at the same time uh may or may not work in this position but um i think rook fd1 could be a very good but candidate move yeah uh and what if we take knight e3 queen e3 knight and e3, we're just queen e3 yes and queen bishop f4 or something bishop f4 oh i'd like to push all the way maybe to here <laughs> <laughs> oh no this one this one is this doom it's eventually it's not it's, it's gonna doom, fall but but I want an open position anyway, so I don't mm -hmm. need it, you know? That's that's my mindset. Like, take it if you want. I play bishop g4 or something, yeah? Ah, um, interesting. That's that's how I kind of want to play this position. Mm -hmm. That is interesting. Yeah, maybe queen e7 is a little bit too ambitious. I should, I should hang on to this knight because this pawn is, is also hanging. So okay, let's let's move back. So if I play this, you wanna take this one. I'll take bishop f4. Mm, what can I do? Maybe keeping an eye on the pawn mm -hmm. by playing something like queen d3 or b3. Maybe or queen e2 back. Uh -huh. But I just go bishop g4 again, because then I threaten bishop h2 now. Yeah, I think I don't mind giving this up, because ah, um, okay, okay. I'll do this, and if you take, then here, and then, okay, I can choose to play here, but maybe this is better, I don't know. And then you have to move your bishop, because then but I, I have knight, knight d7 coming up. Yeah, yeah, that's why I'm keeping my bishop on g4, I'm just taking on ah, h2 okay. immediately. <laughs> yeah. But I guess you could just go h3, instead of taking on d5 first. Thank oh, you. by the way, uh, Prague play Rook FD1, so we are on the right oh. track. Oh, okay, uh, okay. So, um, yeah, instead of Rook D5, maybe I just wonder, here I want to go Bishop H2, but instead of Rook D5, can I just go H3? Oh, H3, yeah, I yeah. think this is this is a very smart move, yes. You will take this pawn anytime, right? Um, this That pawn is going to be yours, but what I was really worried in this one is uh, maybe yeah. the Rook here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what I'm thinking as well. I and, know, it's not like... Mm. And the reason why I put the queen over here is so that I will not let you play bishop e6 because, uh, for example, in this position, I, I could have just gone queen b3, but uh, bishop e6 is possible here because after you take, I'll just take it like mm -hmm. this. So that's why I keep my queen on e2. So if that happens, I can take twice on e6. Mm -hmm. And if you play something like this, yeah, maybe it's, it's just take. Let's but bishop h2. This. I want to take bishop. No, bishop, oh, bishop h2, h2 first. first. Yeah. yeah. Then I'll. Che oh, sorry. It's a check. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> You're too ambitious. I'm too ambitious. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Now I have to move my bishop somewhere. Um. Let's say I go back to f4 just just for the funsies. Okay. Um. I like queen d3. Looks very solid to me. Okay. Yeah. Also stopping my ideas of rook e8. Mm, but now I want to go queen b6 somehow. Queen b6. Yeah? I want to go to h6. You know, I want to checkmate you. Mm. Yeah, tricky Laura. 
<laughs> I'm trying my best, you know. I like the bishop pair. If you have to You choose, yeah. I mean, in this position, I would prefer to be a pawn down and have a bishop pair than have these two knights. But of course, I'm not experienced with the knight pair, so maybe that's also the reason. What would you? What you would prefer, white? Yeah, or uh, I mean, um, in general, I like having a pair of bishops myself. Mm -hmm. But um, I think this position, I'm just trying to, to try to prove that the pair of bishops are not really that great. But I have, to, I think I have to play more carefully. So rook fd1 is on the board. So we're talking about what mm -hmm. happened after the knight takes here. Yeah. So what if I take this with the pawn actually? Wow. That's not a very dumb decision as well. I can take it with the pawn. I know queen queen takes this is more tempting to to do, but uh, I just want to have a concrete approach that I'll take this one and then okay. this one. Okay, but I'm going bishop g4 again. Bishop g4. Uh, and this time I think I can push h3. Oh, I, I wanted to take on f3 and go uh, d4, but uh, obviously everything's protected, so I was hallucinating. Um, <laughs> mm, yeah, now I have to go bishop e6, yeah? Yeah. Or something. And okay, knight versus bishop in this type of position, I'll take this knight for uh, bishop mm -hmm. first. And I agree. I mean, it looks like just I can put anything, rook on d4. Uh, I'm currently thinking if this is takeable. Maybe it is actually because I always have b5. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, this, and this looks interesting. That is why d4 played. Yes, yeah, they, that is why Abbas have played d4 just to neutralize this attack on d5 by just by just trading as many pieces as he can. Um, so and also this one is uh, under attack, so you cannot mm. really think of unless you're willing to trade. The pawn on h2 with the pawn on d4. If you are not willing, then you have to move your bishop. Because in this position, after taking like this, mm -hmm. you may or may not take this one first, but eventually it will be something like this. And then bishop moves back, or maybe to f4 again, and then put the bishop on h6, just protecting mm -hmm. uh, g7, which I think it's, it is a preferred position for black compared to what it was before. So. Yeah, I agree. This I like D4. I mm -hmm. like D4 very much. I was just kind of testing what's going on on 93 because obviously Abbaso had to calculate that as well. And it's the most direct move, yeah? Yeah. Um, and, and D4, D4 I like because you really want to be active and you have to push this pawn. So maybe from bishop the bishop g5. Hmm. Yeah, this looks interesting. And what if I... What's your idea if I go... I just want to take this. Oh, wait, I'm hanging <laughs> on the five, obviously. Yeah, so I have to go, what do I have to do? Rookie, rookie eight or something? Ooh, rookie eight. It's, uh... It looks weird. Like, bishop f4 is coming, maybe. So I... I, I this is bad move, probably. Yeah, bishop... But uh, after bishop f4, you have f6. Yeah, but is that good? I don't... Like, I can just... Or you can probably... take on, on d4 in this position, yeah? Yeah, like, no, I cannot play yeah. this way. So rook e8 is obviously also not... Okay, I like bishop g5 very much. So I have to do what? I have to move the bishop from e5. So I'm moving it to d6. But then you're just... Take on... Yeah. Or maybe h3 first. Maybe h3 first, yeah. Yeah. yeah and then this pawn will eventually be... Falling. But then I go h6. H6. Yeah. That's right. Mm. Bishop moves back. Okay, let's go here. C1. Oh, I cannot do that. The The knight is hanging. The rook is unprotected. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So I have to play bishop d2. Wow. Then this is... Um, then this is not something that I actually intend to have so maybe it's a difficult position it's it not so so straightforward as it seems maybe because black's pieces are not really coordinating like rook on a8 bishop on c8 it just looks like somehow white is better but um not so easy yeah not so easy 
I think I will just let Prak think, you know, be good at it. <laughs> there is there is also this line, takes, takes, ah. I know, the bishop cannot move, but uh, what about queen here? But this hmm. is, you, you re it requires some calculation, of course, like this, yeah. whether this works or not, yeah, after takes this. Exactly, we have and to think about it. Don't fall onto something like this, because then, ooh, made by force. <laughs> Okay, yeah, <laughs> that's a bad way to lose this game. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? I did say Abasso could win if White over pushes. So, no, we're not going to see that on the board, obviously. You know, Pregnananda will. But this has happened what after has bishop g5, ideas? bishop d6. So we are on the right oh. track, Laura. We, we analyzed this position before. Uh, wow. But here we thought it's going to be h3. Uh, yeah. Pregnant is still thinking though. We thought it's going to be h3, h6, and then bishop has to move back to d2 yeah. or something like this. But And we stopped the analysis here. Uh, so yeah. I'm just wondering if there is anything better than h3 or whether we really want to protect the, the h pawn or not. Hmm. You don't want to? You don't want to protect it? Yeah, maybe it's not that important, but at the same time, like I feel like d4 can become such a weakness that exchanging it for h2 is not worth it yeah mm -hmm. laura i'd like to keep analyzing this one but there are some uh yeah. development of moves in in the game between feed it versus ali Reza. so we saw the position of the queen b6 and here instead of bishop f3 <laughs> i think again now feed it is pulled with choices yeah you can play any basically Wait, anything man. you can even play king b1 here without worrying about stuff like this is how good white's position is and just because of um just out of curiosity what's the okay still plus 3.6 after king b1 so it is how big of an advantage that feed is feed is he's having right now so but of course he's playing his best chess and then he played bishop e3 i'm just wondering about my idea bishop f3 whether it is Oh, it's it's actually my move is better than Fidit's. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I, I love this bishop f3 actually because it has such a good idea of rook e1 and knight d5 and then resignation is in order. So bishop e3 is just making it too easy, you know, he has to move the queen. So what is his idea after that? And Fidit continued with rook h f1, which, okay, again, spoiled with choices. King b1 was there, you can play it if you want. You can play h4 too, or even like a little unnecessary move like h3, and you are still, you know, you're still much, much better because just judging from the position, it's just, you can pretty much do whatever you want. And after rook h1, um, the advantage is getting thicker, but what also getting thicker is the time difference between Fidit and mm -hmm. Ali Reza. They have mm -hmm. roughly about one hour difference right now. Fidit has to keep up the pace, even though she, even though he's winning right now, but he cannot think for forever. He has to start making practical approaches. I mean, not everything mm -hmm. can be calculated until the end, right? But you can just go by um, with your intuition and then play the moves that you think, that, okay, this, this is enough to win. It doesn't have to be beautiful because there is no <laughs> beauty price i would yeah. say in the candidates yeah you can you can just win the game it's still the same one zero it's not like if you're playing a beautiful game you you gain like one and a half and zero so <laughs> yeah so knight c e5 is on the board right now let's figure this out what do you do as white you are playing fast he needs to he um, has to play fast yeah push pushing on time yeah, what do we do now? What's the win? Um, because this d5 knight is now protecting f7 and bishop is now active through the d file, so your knight d5 ideas are now yeah, it's not, not working there. But can we no going bishop b5 and knight b5? I guess rook c8 is, is um, we can good enough on the for board. black, yeah, rook c8. So that's probably a bit too much. We don't have to go for it. Yeah. No, to be honest, even if I put the eval bar right now, I think white is still better. Probably. Oh, no, <gasps> no, no, no. no Okay, at least it's, what? black is a bit better. A bit better. That bad? <laughs> that was a bad sacrifice. <laughs> oh my mean? gosh. Okay, let's not do what that What do then. you mean? I, I know, I just wanted to see... To, to see 
if if you, if that is an option somehow in the future, but yeah, obviously now everything's protected. And Queen D4 has been played by Vidit very fast, just to. I like this Queen D4. Idea could be Queen F4, Bishop D4. Like I really want to put pressure on F7 somehow. Mm -hmm. Um, but because we can... what am I putting pressure on? I just yeah. I think we can we can do that. Um, instantly, yeah. But oh yeah, with bishop d4, yeah. Uh, bishop d4. Or... Oh no, then we're. I think bishop, yeah, bishop f4 first, coming. maybe. Yeah. And then now we can start actually thinking about some sacrifice here because then the knight is tight. So like takes this, takes this, and takes I like this, that, yeah. and then you have to resort to f6 at some point. So oh, but queen d4 is on the board, Laura. Your move. No, no, no! I saw it was on the board. Oh, you, you it was saw not it was my on the, board. On the board. <laughs> No, don't please. Uh, I, I'm here just to to sacrifice some pieces and <laughs> <laughs> just and just try to to guess the moves. But no, Queen D4. I saw he was. It was played by Vidit. Yeah. Okay. Um. So maybe yes. I think I like your idea. Uh, switching this queen over to the F file, um, pressuring F7 because again. The the king is in trouble right now. You cannot really. Can you try actually, uh, to get some castle? Like like say okay if g six. Yeah, g six seems uh, logical. Mm -mm. How do we go for it now? Because if queen f four, then just bishop yeah. here and then next move yeah. castle. So gotta be. To be honest, I don't really like this queen d4 move. I, I guess yeah. knight c5 is the idea. So g6, knight c5, but... Ah, knight yeah. c5. That's right. So I'll go bishop here. Mm. Wait, are, isn't bishop on b7 hanging? Oh, shoot. Yes, you're right. <laughs> you are right. Okay, yeah. Okay, so we cannot do that. But if we take knight c5, oh, then this is game then over. I'm then. On e5. Yeah, this is game over because yeah. uh, either way you will take on d7 and then h8 is hanging. So okay, g6 is there is a very a terrible blunder. And therefore, that's why rook c8 was rook c8, played. Yeah, 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 makes much sense. Right. Okay. And what now? What now? How do we? Where's this blow? This final blow. Oh, it's well. Again, you can go to what you like, right? Queen f4 with bishop d4, just trying to get this knight out of out of range with uh, the pawn on f7. Uh, but what else? Yeah, I, I need a hard win because that that yeah. type of win is so soft. Um, um, yeah, I me me too. Like this is not the way I want to continue playing this game. I just I want to be more aggressive because actually, if you look at it, we're the same material. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if black does manage to get g6, bishop, g7, and castle, it's not going to be clear anymore who's better or who's winning. So we have to do something, and we have to do something fast. I know this, and looks, I don't know. I know this looks <laughs> a bit uh, weird, or maybe not a bit. It's a lot weirdness <laughs> in it, but <laughs> queen a7. Hmm. Okay, and after, wait, yeah, after what? After bishop c6, let's say, what's your idea? It's just grabbing the pawns. Yeah, you just want but to there grab is, the okay, pawn? There, there is, okay, eight, and I, yeah, 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 yeah. It's not um, convincing. I, yeah, I don't think that's the right No, of course, it's not the right direction. I was just messing up. <laughs> was, uh, no, messing actually, this is, this is the first move I thought about as well, because it's just mm -hmm. direct move attacking the bishop, and you're asking him where to go, but it ju he just has squares to go, so that's sad. What if I go bishop f4 immediately, though? Bishop f4 what, immediately, yes. What do you do? I think it's, it's got to be... Oof, f6? Is f6 a move? I don't believe it. Because f6, I think I can just... G5, no, G5 looks know, so good. All yeah. the way, there's bishop h5 coming up too. Mm -hmm. It might be, we might be seeing some checkmate with the bishop. Yeah. I mean, the king in the middle of the board. So, okay, f6 is such a terrible move. But if we push back the knight to g6, um, what's next? Hmm. Yeah, what's next? What's next? 
Okay, let's say I just go bishop g3 and say you cannot develop anyway. That's true. Yeah, this bishop is so terrible. Cannot go anywhere. Yeah, and the king is terrible. The queen is terrible. Everything's terrible. But it's still, there is no direct blow. So, oh I mean, my gosh, Prusa, queen a7 what? is on the board. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> What do you how wait what oh, it is um it is the move <laughs> but okay wait wait i just don't understand uh, after bishop c6 i cannot take this because of rook a8 the queen is kind of trapped but if after bishop c6 what is the idea just knight d4 maybe i guess so but knight c5 knight d4 what else doesn't doesn't rook a8 work again or we just want to go queen c7. At least there's queen c7. Um, so about after knight d4, can I take bishop d6? Oh, you're such a pawn grabber too, Laura. <laughs> I need this pawn to go you need away. That pawn, but I can take this, yeah? And having the rook on f1 is, is very useful. Oh, I, you cannot castle. That's, that's very takes helpful. Takes and yeah. takes this. Yeah, yeah? and then yeah, okay, yeah. this is also hanging. Okay. Yeah, so, in that case, yeah. So knight, okay. knight d4 then. But after here, takes, okay, mm. I have this one too. Takes, takes, and then win here. I mean, it's it's got to be winning. I don't like exchanging my queens when I'm attacking. So, yeah, yeah it's got to be winning at some point. Like, if you go here now, okay, at least there is this one. But if you go back here, at least I have, I have my pair of bishops, which is, oh, maybe I can, yeah. I can sack now. Yeah, because now yeah, this yeah. is protected. I can I like that now. now. Yeah. Okay, queen a7. I think still... Okay, works works out. Works so out, I yeah, guess after, after bishop a8, can I sacrifice again with bishop d5, though? That okay. could be the main idea of queen a7. So not actually wanting to take on a6, but to, to, to preserve the idea of, of this one. Like, you can have c7 covered with the queen and the bishop because look at how terrible the king in the center it just needs one more check <laughs> to get checkmated so yeah i like this knight c7 okay. is coming wow queen a7 being strong okay i like it i like it i was just looking at other games if there is mm -hmm. any games that as interesting as this one but I don't think so. I think this one, well, thanks to Ali Reza's impulsive <laughs> decision by taking the pawn on f2, yeah, putting himself, it's really like putting himself in trouble. Yeah. 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 He really was, I, I really, I just want to ask him the question why, what was in his head when he played it. I, I just really wonder because he's, a great player he's also a natural sicilian player i might be mistaken but he knows he cannot do that right mm -hmm. or did anybody tell him that <laughs> probably <laughs> probably yeah no i just want to know what was in his head in his mind at that point sometimes it's just something so absurd or something so easy so yeah it's it's hard but i want to can we go to the game muzichuk yes. against san or because i saw g5 on the board Ooh, i didn't expect that type of move maybe it's already <laughs> yeah. if you see this type of move is already a sign that black is is desperate oh Oof. so desperate unfortunately and, and bishop c3 happened and and um rook a4 what you said was yeah was gonna happen but so oh my here God, g5 yeah, we saw this position right after knight d4 so yeah anna didn't take the bishop or didn't play queen e8 or any move that we suggested um she played g5 with 17 minutes on the clock so she spent 23 minutes to play g5 which is tough later. yes and after bishop c3 rook a4 and f4 rook uh queen c8 Ooh. Wow, let's. This is another fun okay. position to to analyze because then, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. What you can, oh, yeah, I don't know. For example, you have this idea: taking on h seven, taking on g five, taking on e six, taking many things. Yeah, <laughs> everything we want to take everything. But, um, yeah, but but first of all, bishop is hanging, so yeah. 
are we doing something about it or are we sacrificing it? Let's, I, I think, you know, I don't like taking risk in a position that is almost winning for me. Like, I agree, same. <laughs> yeah, like, like, why would I give chance to my opponent to yeah. somehow have a counter-attack just by having extra peace? So maybe my first idea is just to move back, like bishop p2. And if you attack me like this, I'll move it back to a1. And then I, okay. I have like a mm -hmm. permanent permanent uh, advantage around the king side. I don't have to give something on the queen side. So that's that That would be my first idea. But maybe maybe there is a concrete continuation in this one that you can just sack, 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 and then win the game. But Tan listens to me. <laughs> yeah, she played bishop b2. Yeah, okay, bishop b2, very logical. Like, yes, asking your opponent what is your defense like black cannot even go bishop c5 because queen g5 queen h6 is yes. coming checkmate bishop soon. is tied to this pawn and yeah now if rook b before yeah I'll, I'll move it i'll move it back bishop a1 my bishop is still doing fine it's not a problem at all and next move i can i can start with f5 i can take on g5 i can even push h6 Ooh, so many choices right I can also think um, of knight e6 yeah. too. Um, <laughs> I like that one. I want to sacrifice the pieces. Um, yeah, but okay, the, the rook on a4 is causing some problems mm -hmm. potentially. So it's not exactly as easy as it sounds. But um, how can we continue with black now? To try, to try. Can to we try. go h6? Maybe king h8 too. Okay, yeah, that, because, that sounds good. Yeah, because if, if h6... Um... It doesn't look the yeah, right I want way. To take Just this. Yeah, ninety six, and then mate on h seven, maybe like mm -hmm. if taking taking. If you don't take, then I just win extra points or something. Of yeah? course. So yeah. and if you take this, then this is just force mate. And if you take it with the, uh, if you block the check like this, then okay, I have this. I attack this. I attack many things. So I don't think um, h six is an option. Also, king h8, maybe just a step out from the possible check on e6. Um, again, f5, it's just h6 itself, it's also good. Um, hmm, taking this also what is, fine. Yeah, but what is what is the strongest? Can we take on g5? What's going on? You can, can take on g5. I don't, I'm not sure which one is strongest. <laughs> I think all of the moves are very strong here. Yeah, because g6 is coming as well, yeah. so... Um, I just don't know what to do with black, you know? I It looks so game over already. It is. And what is almost game over is a, we'll, we have <laughs> to go back to feed it and uh, Ali Reza. Turns out he took on a6. I think it's because I saw this um, briefly after rook, e, rook a8. There what? is this one. Because after this, you just give a check. And after this, you can just take. And you have to... The rook is hanging, right? And then mm -hmm. the pawn is about to promote. So you wow. go here, but then you can have bishop a6. Bishop a6, such a beautiful, such a beautiful and way to win. That's it. You just simply promote the pawn and then you have you have an ex exchange up with dozens of pawns, dozens of extra pawns on the queen side. So um, maybe not the most or the, the best way to win the position, but this is enough. Yeah, and when Fidit has only 20 minutes on the clock, if he saw one winning line that cannot be uh, refutable by black, then just go for it. I think that's the, the right approach. And I think he's doubling, he's double checking and triple checking things now that after rook a8, knight b5, is because it's such a, a nice queen sacrifice, temporarily mm -hmm. queen sacrifice, because you're going to get it back anyway. After this, I think you have to take, right? Because if you take on this, then you just win uh, many yeah. pawns. Yeah, it's over. I think this absolutely over. So I think you have to try to take it, but but okay. everything's over. Yeah, yeah, everything is over. But after this, is also it's it's force win. Maybe we'll see some resignation very soon, actually, by Alvareza. But okay, in this position, you can also play this. But I think you can take, yeah. I think you can just yeah, take. I think so. We take take and then I like and then... bishop b six. 
Knight b6, rook e8, but that doesn't really give much actually. Oh, knight c5. Is knight c5 a... No. Or right, you, I can just go rook f4. Oh, you right? can just go rook f4, yeah, and then put the rook here and then try to get around from that. But we didn't play knight b5. What? Oh, no. Wait, what? He played bishop a7. Oh. Wait. That's disappointing. This might be still okay, but again, I like the continuation with knight b5. Yes, like I didn't see anything wrong with it. In fact, no, I just it, thought it's it not. was... It's just safe. What do you mean it's safe? I mean, it's safe. You don't have to calculate so much uh, many moves ahead, like bishop a7, okay. and yeah. then you're fine, you know, but... And then b5 is yours, so maybe this is like a... Okay, this is a very good approach too, actually. Um, yeah, okay. The next okay. move you take on b5 with any of your pieces, with the knight or with, with the bishop, you are still standing much better. But it's just... Knight b5 just looks so adventurous, you know? <laughs> but I'm, I'm curious to see which... <laughs> okay, bishop a7 still stands very fine. Okay. But in this and... position, can I take on knight b5? Oh, okay, so Fidel made the right choice. This is still okay. Uh, knight b5 is still fine. Uh, white would have been better too, but bishop a7 is a better move. So, okay, go feed it. <laughs> yeah, okay, he's a GM. He's a super GM for yes, a yes, reason. Yes. I got a bit <laughs> but, excited uh, there. Me too. Like, like knight b5 just looks game over. I don't know. Okay, but bishop a7 is so strong. Okay. Looks a bit boring, but it's strong. So I will forgive him, you know, for this kind of decision. <laughs> yeah. Anything, anything it takes to win the game, even something like move, some move like this, which is, if you remember about this bishop a7 um, idea, do you remember mm -hmm. the game between Karfpov versus Unziker? Or maybe you're not a Rulopas player, because if you're a Rulopas player, you know, you have to know your classics. And this is one of the classics that... Um, that changed the direction of Ru Lopez over the years. Karpov uh -huh. played bishop a7. He had, uh -huh. uh, just to tell you briefly, he had like doubled the rook on the a. Mm -hmm. And then the way he played bishop e7 is to stop anything on the queen side so that he can focus on attacking on the king side. I mean, mm -hmm. the move itself, Sounds, yeah. yeah, the move itself um, is like a normal move but if you if you see a deeper meaning behind that move and then you understand this type of strategy which uh, unfolded after that mm -hmm. you'd be amazed on how creative Karpov is that time before the invention of computer mm -hmm. so but this mm -hmm. bishop a7 um is posing a completely different meaning to the game <laughs> Yeah, okay, so let's see after G6 how are we how are we forcing resignation somehow. Are we just taking bishop G5? G6, yeah, or just take this yeah. one, yeah, with bishop, I guess. So that guess you can have bishop. knight here, yeah. Sorry, knight going here. Uh, yeah. what else? What else? What else? So queen c8, queen c8. You, you, you queen c8 you just take and then you simply have two extra pawns, maybe. Yeah, like if like this, I think you can just mm -hmm. simply take and then take like this. Yeah. And still this has a power terrible to bishop. Yeah. Ah, uh, terrible bishop. Yeah. I mean I'm I'm surprised. Okay, I mean I like that Firuja is still trying because Vidit is low on time, but what do you think? Will there be resignation in like the next five moves or mm -hmm. or not? Okay. Hmm. What would be the move here? Oh, a g6. G6, played, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. No, I yeah, I think Virja will resign very soon. So bishop e bishop takes b5 for sure. Uh unless you see something else. No, it's great. This is a great move. I mean, I guess bishop g7 now. Bishop c6, knight c6, queen c6, rook a7. Is something to and then knight b5 again okay but that's something yeah that's something that that ah oh, this this is spoiled with options too 
but I just I, bishop b5 is just the most direct approach, I would say. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't think you have, I mean, I don't know why you would complicate at this point. Yeah, you have 18 minutes, you have no 30 second increment, you have 19 moves to play. So if you try too much to calculate the direct win, you might get lost in time trouble. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Um, I think the easiest strategy in this position is to get as many materials you can with mm -hmm. the minimum time uh, that you can spend on the clock so that when you have, when you really have to think, the position is not complicated anymore. And it's already like an automatic response, you know, like this is not too complicated. You just keep pushing the pawns or playing other pieces too. We'll keep an eye on this um, because otherwise we'll be stuck on analyzing this game until the end and forgetting <laughs> that there are many other games that also interesting. Let's see the game between uh, Faisali versus Lahno, which if, just imagine the rook, if this was here, you can have mate in one. <laughs> what? So the king is, Wait. The king is kind can of like Can we count the material? Oh, sorry, the like material is absolutely equal. So they're equal. just like, black is just, wow. Black is better. Black is better. So let's see the position after this one. So bishop, uh, sorry, b takes c3. Yeah. And here, Faisali decided to take, which I think is a mistake. I think you have to take on e5 or take on c3 with the knight because then uh, mm -hmm. things have uh, closed in the center. And if the things are close in the center, it is easier for black to play as black in this position. So you have mm -hmm. to kind of open it up. So I think I think knight takes c3 would have been better. And then something like this. And after you get something like this, at least now, even though things are closing up, the bishop is, is standing better, right? Compared to the yeah. position that we saw on the board, you have to even... If you want to open up the position, you have to exchange this bishop, which is I don't think you'd like it. You need this bishop. Yeah. And after yeah. knight c before, you see how how mm. Lahno uh, is getting just stronger, stronger in the center. And bishop yeah, c4, not good. c5, very, very um, active play by Lahno. And after this, okay, we will have bishop f6. And queen has to retreat and take stakes. And knight f4, oof. Look at this. This is a <laughs> sack over here. What do we have? So if we take here, I think it's just bishop f3 followed by queen g5 and checkmate coming up oh. soon. Yeah? Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, some nasty trap that Lahno set up there. So, But that was played, actually. Queen oh, that was played. Bishop, yeah. But so don't G3. take here. Uh -huh, g3. Yeah. Uh -huh. And after queen d4, oh, rook queen d4. Two. But Lano oh. is still in the driver's seat right now because okay, queen, queen d4. You want to give a check over here and then give a mate on f2. So I think rook a2 is also it was uh, attacking the queen. So rook a2 is, is is I think the automatic respond. But knight d3 and then you're going to win an exchange. Is it that easy? Am I just winning an exchange? Maybe not. Wow. Maybe yes. We'll queen see. Queen d2. Yeah, it, this I know. One just is hanging. Yeah, bishop is hanging as well, yeah. So, so queen d2, you can I'm just simply something. take this. Oh, wow. So is this just absolutely winning after knight d3? Yeah, I think I so guess. too. Yeah. I think so too. Wow, Lahno finally, I think, compared to yesterday's game where she was actually winning, but mm -hmm. this one I think is an easier game to yeah. win in a better game because she's been winning um, a few of her past games but um, ended up drawing but this one, I think, I think she will seal the deal. I think it's time for her as well to seal the deal. Like she's been having so many winning positions that it's it's time. At some point, there will be a a point in the bag. So yeah, ninety three, very nice. And okay, I mean, time wise, they're both on this kind of on the same time, so nobody's in any trouble and. We might Looks, actually see some resignation yeah. soon in this position because I'm just thinking if if white can prolong the game, but by doing what? Because now the queen is under attack, the queen has to move, and the knight is attacking the 
the rook if you play anything else apart from queen c3 and queen d2 i will take the rook but if you play queen c3 i can just simply take this and then take the rook yeah and then yeah but what if protect. i yeah what if i don't move the queen what if i go rook d2 or something aha uh -huh. rook d2 oh and then you just take and after rook d4 knight c2 yeah or something that, like that that's correct yeah and then i have another fork mm. yeah and if queen and d2 takes and then let's say you go here uh okay you have this at least yeah bishop e4 and at then least at least uh, maybe there's something more but uh this is enough uh yeah i don't see i don't see a good reply by fashali here because every single line is is lost for white yeah actually we might see resignation soon because it's not a position really even with exchange down, doesn't look very playable. Mm -hmm. I don't see any ideas. But yeah, very good. I mean, Lahno, that was an interesting opening choice by Vaishali, a surprising mm -hmm. one. And then the fact that she chose to play this and not know exactly how to continue the position, that's a bit of surprising, like taking on B3 with a pawn, like you said. So now, yeah. Okay, I think I think Lachna will will absolutely finish this game off. Yes, let's go to the game between Gukes versus uh, Hikaru because um, oh, hang on, hang on. I'd like to come back to this, but it looks like quite calm. Uh, not much to talk about anyway. Uh, but yeah, let's come back to this one. But this one, Feed it versus Ali Reza. <laughs> oh, finally, Ali Reza Castle, but. <laughs> at what cost yeah and uh, oh. we saw the position of the g6 um feed it took on b5 bishop h6 check king b1 bishop takes on b5 takes on b5 castle and knight c7 so feed it is after some material here just to get some exchange on a8 Oh yeah, we love the material, yeah. We love material. We, we're just taking it. This, we're just taking everything. Taking everything. Many how many extra pawns? Two. Feed it has okay, now one. <laughs> but Yeah, okay. now one, but it doesn't matter. We have to be a bit um careful not to allow any knight IE three. We can do but... this. We can okay. we can take now. Queen eight. And after you take, then I'll move my queen to E2. Mm. Yeah. I I covered everything. I unpin myself, and now if you take this, I'll take this knight. If you don't take my knight, then I'll move away with my bishop. Then my position is just fabulous. So I think that's what's going to happen. Yeah, feed it took on a eight, mm. and I think queen takes a eight and queen e two. That's it. Queen a eight is already on the board. Yeah, what's to play for? Maybe Firuja is really just trying to take as much time from Vidit uh, so he may might try to move 40 he just might try play fast but it's not gonna work like queen a7 queen g4 we are on the right track Laura this is what, <laughs> exactly what happened yeah okay, what now bishop g7 I guess he will go for something like that he will try he will try he, he will he keep will playing until it looks um yeah he will try Focus, to yeah. mod the water too if you remember the game between uh, Ian Nepom Nature versus Alreza himself. Alreza mm -hmm. had only, um, I think, under a minute to play, no, 20 seconds, 20 seconds for the last oh. four moves. And they're playing without yeah. increment, right? So, yeah, Alreza really had to mud the water to keep the game alive. But again, all the moves he made was not really the best moves, of course, given the position was already better for Ian that time. So, mm. Yeah, it's interesting to see what he might come up with. He will he will press feed its time a lot. Uh having yeah. 12 minutes on the clock right now for the rest of the not for the rest, for the next eleven moves, which is I think manageable. Oh yeah, for sure. He will like Vid doesn't have any hard choices to make here, nor is anything critical in the near future at all. Like knight is on b3, it's perfect. King is on b1. Mm -hmm. This pawn on d6 is the winning pawn anyway. So um I wanted to ask you though, if you had a choice, would you play um this male male time control, so open time control, or woman time control? Uh if I had a choice, actually, hmm. 
have no preference. I think I would oh, easily wow. get I would easily get adapted to any of the time control. But since the time control that's being um played by the open section right now is a little bit unfamiliar, like I think I don't but it has a similar similar time control to one of the events. I think it was Bill. But instead of 120 minutes for 40 moves, mm. I think Bill has 100 minutes for 40 moves mm. or something like that. But it has the third time control. So there is um, yeah, there is an extra time on move 40, 41 and move 61. So, But anyway, um, I think I'm more experienced in playing the time control that's being played in the women's section with this 90 30 plus 30 minutes again because it's it it is the normal time control yeah we play that in olympiad we play that in many official events i think it was mm. also the the time control that was being played in the world cups too so yeah yeah it's just a i bit, mm -hmm. yeah it's it, no it's very very interesting choice by fida to put this time control for candidates and then i guess also for the world championship match is it the same i think so I think in the World Championship match, you have another, a, a little bit different. I think it's like longer even. Slightly different, yeah. Slightly different. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think I think I would like to have the same time control for, for the candidates as for the championship. I think that's fair. Mm -hmm. But first of all, I, I, I would hate not to have 30 seconds uh, per move in the classical games like I would not want to play in the open candidates just because of the time control because for me I will spend as much time as I can for calculating and then suddenly you know when I I will need to play moves I will not have the increment yeah yeah and I would not get used to it like maybe maybe you could but I would hate it so just for that reason I find it very interesting choice for for the candidates to to put this time control you know for the players right yeah i hope i hope uh especially fit it has to get adapted to this time control like very <laughs> fast because okay he's he's winning in this in this position and for the rest of yeah. uh until the 40th move i think the moves are quite easy uh, so we can keep an eye on this and we'll see the game between fresh Ali versus uh lahno mm -hmm. which According to what you analyze, this happened. <laughs> another fork happened with knight c2. Yeah. Rook d d1, knight takes e1, and rook takes e1. And this should be a technical win for Lahno. Yeah. Um, somehow it just feels like white. It's, he's, she's not going to have a lot to play for anymore soon. Yeah. I think the easiest... The, yeah. Sorry, the easiest continuation in in this position is of course to swap off the rooks because once mm -hmm. once white rook is is off of the board, it's just an easier way to play yeah. it. And at yeah, rook rook f e eight, it should be my main my main move here. At some point, I think you have to hide to f one because mm -hmm. if you play rook here, then I'll just pin exactly um the bishop, and I think this is just like gg. But yeah. if you hide over here, then Oh, there's so many things here. Like for example, what can I do? You can play bishop e2. You can play if bishop you want e2. To. That's right. Yeah. Or you can just don't do anything. Oh, f7 is hanging, by the way. So we have to do something <laughs> yeah, but about it. Can we can we just play rook e5 and attack a5? Like I don't care about f7 if yeah, I have a yeah. pass pawn, right? No, this is totally right approach. Yeah, like rook e5, just take on f5. You might want to promote that a pawn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is almost game over. So, and rook f8 is on the board mm -hmm. as well, so she's going for it. And yeah, by Charlie, let's see. Will she play rook f1? Will she play rook c1? Or will she play sign rook e3? And just hold <laughs> Go the home. day. Yeah, and get the pizza. One is not you know, get the pizza in any case. If you win, if you lose. Bishop g2 is there. So oh, oh, many that's, things, many oh, things. Yeah, nasty, nasty. No, yeah, I guess we'll see. We'll see soon. I think. By Charlie is just kind of processing what happened, and of course she will try. But yeah, I think we can write this one off. Also, but can yeah, yeah. Go ahead. 
No, I just wanted to to see what's going on in um, Pan against yes. Mizichuk because <laughs> I was about to. Okay, I just asked to go to that game. Yes, so let's what let's see what's happening here. So after uh, Bishop B two, and I chose to play Knight C five, mm -hmm. uh, probably protecting oh, E six wow. here because the sacrifice yeah, is, is very dangerous. Yeah, so F five itself in Knight and or. Oh f5 e f5 and bishop f5 and queen d8 so this is the current position right now and hmm. interesting yeah yeah it is interesting i don't see could, like i want to go e6 but then black just plays f6 so i did nothing with that right um so the question is how am i opening up this this game do i just go eight six H6, no. I like it. Why not? I mean, I think also this is the kind of position where white can, can play many moves and mo most of them are winning, probably. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to be that direct. But this bishop on b2 is going to be strong. I could probably even play bishop c1 if I wanted to, but let's not do that, right? Even if H6, you want I to like play it, yeah. e6, yeah, e6 also I think it's working too. You just mm. open this diagonal for the bishop. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, but f6, f6, how do we then continue? Take, maybe. Oh, <laughs> you're really aggressive yeah. today, yeah? <laughs> and then this is the only place to not to Yeah, get. yeah, exactly. And then, and then... Okay. Because after queen, queen g6, now it's queen e8, though, no? Yeah, I give a check, and then I have knight f5. Oh, you want to go knight f5, yeah. If that's so, if that's... The easy way. That's, very that's nice I think. One. If, yeah, I think that's the easiest way to continue. Um, oh, I like e six. Then if bishop h seven works, that's great. Yeah. So because if you take on here, I think I'll just give a check, and I think you have to take because otherwise this knight discovery with the bishop, if you move mm -hmm. the king, is gonna be nasty. So knight takes e six, queen takes e six, and still you have to move the king, and then this discovery <laughs> is happening again. And we have a resignation by Faisali versus Lahno. Mm. So finally Lahno won um, the game. The, he, yeah, she's been winning many games before in this in this uh, women's candidate, but then and always ended up with a draw. Finally, um, the experience has proven to overcome yeah. the youngster here so well done for uh lahno we'll come back to that position but here tanzongi oh. decided to play h6 also great move so also great move, how... yes yeah 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 let's see what anna could she has seven minutes okay seven minutes to go what would you do here? Like, if you were really desperate to do something, what do you do with black? Knight e4. I, I just... Okay. You're finding ideas. I like it. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. And now, if I go e6 now... e6, um, maybe bishop f6. So, because after you take out backing h8. Oh, that's how you're hiding from me. Uh, I have 96, don't I? Maybe, yes, yes. Um, any, yeah, like 94, I like the the approach, just, hmm. Everything seems so good for a while. Yeah, yeah we've been discussing this. <laughs> Everything's so beautiful. Like, I would love to have this position on the board, wouldn't you? Me too, me too. Yeah, like. That's great. And I, I'm sure uh, Tan Zhongui knows what she will do. Oh, Bishop C8 on the Bishop board. Bishop C8. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it, this I'm is sure just inviting E6 to happen. Well, in this case, I think Black is going to take on E6, no? And then after Bishop E6, Bishop E6, are you going Rook E6 or? E6? Oh, yeah, you, you can just take now, yeah? Yeah. Oh, but but... Oh, yeah, that's true. If this one, I think, yeah, I think you can just take like this, yeah? I just want to open up this diagonal for my bishop on b2. Mm -hmm. No, I agree, I agree, I agree. That, that would be very nice. I mean, even a, a calmer <clears throat> approach like bishop takes, this one is also, I think it's uh, brilliant because then you have this 
<laughs> yeah. Wait, does that work? Maybe. Because now I have D4 now. Yeah, but at least I got this. And then Oh, and I I'm got just taking... this, stacking Uh, everything oh. and promote. Or maybe like this. I don't know, like even C, Oh, that C3 would be beautiful. first or anything, yeah? I mean, yeah, just rook 8 and Yeah, after and then like 7 bishop bishop 8 3. Yeah, this is awesome. Oh, this looks... I just want Oh. to get some mating idea with this pawn. So that's why C3 was set up a bit. Yeah, but even... Ah, okay, you wanted to mate, yeah, sure. Yeah, maybe maybe this is like a clear approach anyway. You just take stakes <laughs> and knight here. I love this approach. And then Yeah, let's okay, say... now queen has to go there, yeah. Yeah. That's so, yeah, d8, what do we do? And okay, bishop d4 now. That's it. Look, you, you don't sacrifice anything, but just look at the position, everything, yeah? Just It's so beautiful. if like this, okay, you don't have to play beautifully. You can play c3 Mm. and then you can enjoy the position, yeah? Mm. Having the knight on f5 is just tremendously good for white. Uh, but of course, we can we can take a look at a more direct approach of, of a6. This is also very, very interesting. Here we can have... Do we have this idea? I think we still do. Check. Because if you take... I can have... Okay, I can have this, maybe. Or which one? This? <laughs> which Something one yeah like this. this is good yeah Oh, no, I no, can no. just Sorry. have Like this immediately. It's fine. Because oh knight and f5. after king g6 Yeah, then I can give a check first. no you can't because the knight is on c5 Oh, shoot. Shoot. That's <laughs> that's one way to lose this game. <laughs> oh no yeah, my yeah. queen Oh, no, my queen. Yeah. <laughs> So, but, okay. no I, I like rook f or something but I know like yeah maybe maybe King f2, you mean? yeah let's say king f2 Yeah, because this one nothing. I eh? just just simply take on the on the knight, and then yeah Rook is king coming. just sorry yeah king just seven has to happen I guess right Yes, and hmm here, I think you have to play here. yeah I think. Oh, I really want to take this. You know, <laughs> oh wow just yeah because, just because this one. just because you could yeah yeah Mm. yeah yeah But yeah now there is king g6, so I have to face mm. myself. i think yeah bishop at seven is slightly too ambitious because Of course. it's not needed yeah just because it's not needed the forced way to win because i i'm scared that black will now play rook d4 and then he will she will have two pieces Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh for rook and i'm scared of I don't have the attack anymore. So let's see it again. After e6, if f6... Oh, e6. E6 happened. Oh, wow. So what Okay. is after f6? Also, there is this one. Check, check. Check here. If you take, it's going to be really dangerous, no? Yeah, it looks, but can you prove me how it is lost? Yeah. That I, I just want to see, like, uh, I'm sure there should be something, but. Hmm. Because even if I go something like rook f3, rook e3, king g7 is coming again. So if I, yeah, like this, you play this, maybe. Ah, oh, directly. Or king g7, yeah? But if king g7, ah, I have this, knight c6 and take on g5. Yes, <laughs> yes, you do that. You do have that. Yeah, okay, so you have to go. So if you, Yeah, the, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 but yeah. at least in this position, I can, okay, let's say like this, like this. Can I sack? Oh, wow. <laughs> too much, it's too much. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, but just this one. actually, This one is fine. actually, can, can, we, can we do that? Because if we don't play rook f3, but let's say we go rook e3. Does Uh-huh. that make a difference? And can we sack now? And Like, after Eric, this... yeah, now we knight c6, and can we sacrifice with queen f6 then? It's <laughs> nice, no? I To don't... sacrifice. Yeah, let's Check. just show it. Like, Check king if h5. here there's rook h4, unfortunately. Ah, but rook h4 is, is covering stuff. Okay, we are way too... Optimistic. We are way... Yeah... Okay, just, just, Way too in attacking mode. yeah, bishop f6, I think this will still do deal anyway.
Yeah. I mean, I, there's so many things too. Like you don't you don't even need to sacrifice. Like after F6, uh, mm. you don't need to sacrifice. Your position is fine. You can play. What can you play here? Queen. Let's calculate. Takes, takes. Mm -hmm. Hmm. What if I have the same idea, but I prepare first? Oh, I like that. So that yeah, I can have bishop h7 in the next move. I, I like that very much. I think that's a cleaner way to continue this position. Like after knight e4 or something, I can just probably like... Yeah, it, now so. I can take like this and then yeah. give a check. You cannot take because of rook h3. But um, king h8 now though? King h8. I mean, we, we're completely, we're just so focused on king h6 that... That's true. We kind of forgot about <laughs> moves back. Oh, that's true. And there's rook h8 as rook g8, yeah. yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. the that's the sad part. Okay. No, ah, we okay, just... then we, we, we sacrifice this. <laughs> Hang on, I, I want to win this game without sacrificing anything. I'm I'm so stingy, you know, like I don't like I don't like giving up any of my material. Um Hmm. I know you want to sacrifice. I'm scared of sacrificing in this position because the wrong sacrifice can lead to the opposite result, you know? And I'm just scared. What if yeah. I just play a completely abstract move like C3? <laughs> you know what I mean, right? You, I want to <laughs> get my bishop to B1 and then play Queen F5 and oh, that looks just nice. as if nothing happened. Anything with Knight E4, I can just take with the Rook. I, I I actually love that idea as well. Like C three is so elegant and so simple, and just put let's put the queen on f five and let's win, yeah. Because how are you going to protect this one? Yeah, you have to play bishop here, but then f, or maybe this one something like that, and knight goes to c six. I mean, there are many other other stuff too. F six is on the board now. It's time for the truth. Which idea will Tanzongi play in this position? calm idea or some attacking or sacrificing the bishop on h7 which looks very very tempting um mm. <laughs> yeah um i don't know what what do you think she will sacrifice do you think this is the moment to go for it or would you just be like calm and go c3 or something like that well she's a great attacker but also she's She's a positional player, so I wouldn't be surprised if she's she if she plays c three. But also maybe we miss something in our calculation. And also this is the, this is another strategy. You see that your opponent is down to two minutes 55, 57 seconds. You'd like to complicate the position, mm. right? But also at the same time, there's another strategy that if you play c three, you give your opponent some time to choose. And sometimes if you are spoiled with choices like that. You get confused compared to if you let your opponent to, to play in this type of position. It's like just doing the process of elimination. Oh, king goes here, bad. King goes there, bad. Okay, king here. <laughs> right? So, yeah. Yeah, no idea. Like, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm totally torn between taking on h7 and c3. Or maybe something else. Could there be yeah. something else? Like moving the queen so we could yeah. play some knights c6, c6 I guess. Yeah, that's that's yeah, a good idea yeah, too. I everything. I mean, look at all these weak squares around like king. Like, oh, it's just so. And the bishop on b two looks like it, they're like it's doing nothing right now, but it it's gonna be such a beast soon and bishop on f5 it's incredible and this knight on d4 can jump anywhere i just you know i can just you know i don't need to say anything i can just adore this position and say nothing <laughs> <laughs> yeah very interesting point of the game this one tanzumi versus anna I don't have a heart to taking a break, you know, because this this game has been very interesting, and I feel like we need to keep an eye for some time yeah. more. And I think, yeah, we sorry. also have some 
crazy position in the game between Praknananda and Abasov. What's wow. happening here? So uh, we saw the position up to d4. And here mm -hmm. Prague played bishop g5, mm -hmm. bishop d6, g4. We didn't oh. expect this move before. Yeah, we were talking about bishop d H2. No, we were talking about h3. h3, yeah. yeah. But oh, okay, h6, queen e4. Instead of retreating, Laura, you have to keep <laughs> going, advancing your oh, pieces. Man. man, what a game. So gf, and after that, rook a7, rook d4. G4, mm -hmm. you have to move the knight. Bishop takes h2, check. King g2, thanks to the knight on c5. There is no bishop g bishop e7. And after queen e5, this is the current position right now. And hmm. crazy, 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 crazy. Well, according to the e-file bar, Prague is standing a bit better. But could he wait? Is there any winning position before? It looks it looks shaky to me uh, how black continued this. Mm -hmm. this. This bishop h2 is especially, it looks very suspicious, but if queen e5 is strong enough, then yeah. Um, I don't understand this position. <laughs> it's how, how do you even evaluate this? Like, okay, I understand black now wants to take bishop f5, so I don't want to give activity to black like that, right? Mm -hmm. So... How are we approaching this is the best question. Like, I just want to go rook h1, but it's I, it's not doing anything, yeah? It's yeah, just, bishop f5, maybe. Yeah, just bishop f5, and I have no tricks with any checkmates uh, now. I could make a point that I can take on e5 and go rook d5, but f6 protects everything, so... Yeah, it doesn't really work. So I cannot go for that. So that's why rook d5 was played. Rook d5 was played, mm. forcing the trade of the queen. So if and you take here... F5, yeah. yeah, I think you have to take with the knight, maybe? This knight? Yeah, yeah, this one I mean, looks much better. White still looks better, right? Because, um, just because... Oh! <laughs> shmuch, now shmuch. we have company. <laughs> oh, here oh. we go. Let the star do the job. I don't know what she's doing, but she loves to do that. And that's why I have blanket on the chair. Ah, because otherwise she scratches the chair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> and now she's playing. Okay, yeah. <laughs> How old is your cat? No shame. She is like 14 or 15 years old. My already. goodness, so old. Yeah, and the other, the black cat that you saw before, she's like 17, so oh, wow. they're very old. They're very yeah. old, yes. But they're home cats, so they're treated very well. I mean, during the break, I did not feed myself. I went to feed them because <laughs> they were really hungry. Wow, well, so kind of you. Oh, well, <laughs> keep the cat there because it's, it's really nice to have one of your yeah. cats. Actually, I'm just going to remove myself at this point. <laughs> I'm just going here. Yeah, okay. No, yeah, she's now the star of the show. Of course, of course. <laughs> okay, so we have rook d5 on the board. And after queen takes e4, yes, uh, Prague took it with the knight on g. And, oh, yeah. keep an eye on this. But, Laura, the game between Tanzungi and Anna, <gasps> she took on h7. So we missed something wow. on the calculation. So she took on h7, king takes h7 and queen f5 so we were talking about okay king king h8 what happened after king h8 actually um you can just simply play knight c6 and take on g5 yeah, yeah? I, something like that yeah because be then you have playable. to play something like this and now you can just take this like this because there is a checkmate here mm -hmm. and if you do this then you have this yeah yeah and this is looks like game over yeah so Wow, so queen f5 on the board. So, so you have to Anna... take then. And this is where we kind of like stuck on continuing what to do. Yeah. Oh, but the uh... same thing. You can easily play this. Whenever the king steps to this position, you play knight c6 and then takes this. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is it. And in case of some ninety four, we just take rook e4, yeah? Yeah, so this is just, you can just simply just take it. easy. So, 
oh, Knight C6 is on the board immediately. So, so Anna didn't want to take a risk by taking on H6. Uh, she played King H8 and mm. Tanzongi played Knight C6. Yeah, according to our analysis. And next move, wherever the queen goes, next move, you just take on G5. We should just stick with this one because mm -hmm. maybe checkmate is approaching and Anna will have to move the queen very soon. And then I just want to see how Tan will finish this this beautiful masterpiece. I feel like this game is a masterpiece, right? It is. It is such a nice game by, by Tan, like starting from the opening, almost not risking anything in her position and always um, always on the driver's seat. This is what I like about Tan Zongi. When she sees the momentum, she's not letting it go. So after knight c6, currently Anna is still thinking, but Anna has to move fast. She only has about 90 seconds left on the clock, and the position is not to her liking, of course. Mm. Yeah, wherever the queen goes now, queen g5 is there, followed by the idea of queen g7. It's going to be really hard for Anna to refute the idea. Uh, mm, impossible, maybe, even, is the word at this point. Because if, if bishop h7 is working and i feel like tan is in such strong form then even though if she didn't calculate everything till the end her intuition is saying this is the moment to do to go for it mm -hmm. so so i just yeah i'm just excited to see this finish i am really excited to to see how she will just beautifully end yep. because me yeah i usually get like a bit anxious in this kind of position because you know you're winning but you still have to win the game yeah and it's very crucial to stay stay calm and and queen g5 on the board. Yeah, yeah. wow. Yeah. yeah, you're right. You're right. Um... Yes. Would you think we will see resonation or a few more moves? Rook g8, bishop f6. Uh, maybe maybe a few more moves. Yeah, a few more moves. Yeah, after rook g8. I was just yeah, thinking, played. can mm -hmm. oh yeah, it, it is played. I was just thinking, is it possible to take on f6 with the rook? I'm being too I fancy. Was, yeah. Of course, of course, bishop f6 is the easy move. Yeah. But I'm just being a bit fancy over here. Take yeah, let's, here. let's think about the it. The thing is, after rook f7, if you go here, there's a checkmate with the pawn. But well, yeah. there is d4. This is what I don't like. And yeah, if I go, for example, like knight d4, maybe bishop f6 is kind of protecting some stuff, or even queen f7. I like this idea, actually, knight d3. Oh, you're attacking this, you have to take and then bishop c5 yeah. and then... Oh, that's very nice. Yeah. yeah. So this is maybe... No, no, no. This is... I was just <laughs> being fancy. No, just, yeah. just bishop f6 and I think you're, you'll be fine with it. Check here and then if you take, you can just take it back. And after this... Okay, in the worst scenario, you can always give a check for sure. But what else can be done here? I mean, it, it looks like, of course, it looks really lost. But what would be the best continuation? Because knowing Anna, she wouldn't just resign. Yeah, fair point. Fair point. Yeah, maybe there has to be. I was considering Queen F seven first, but the yeah knight knight E seven. Yeah, now... both moves are okay. Yeah, actually, yeah, because now Rook is just under attack, and you cannot move it to F eight because you're getting checkmated. So. Mm -hmm. Wait, and yeah. if you go here, there's a check here. Yeah. 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 So yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, so that's it. I 97. Guess. 97. So here, if you don't take, there's another question. Oh, you have this maybe. And then you just grab this one uh later on. Okay, you have mm. if this one yeah, you can just take this without having, <laughs> without having to worry there's about no G2. Checkmate. There's no checkmate. Yeah. 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 And then this E6 pawn maybe is gonna or maybe there's a clearer way to win. Like after this. Oh, this Ooh. looks very clear now. <laughs> it is clear. You want it even clearer than that? Even okay. clearer than that. <laughs> so check here. Because again, if I take this, maybe. Ah, oh, okay. You take this and then I take on e6. This might be the continuation. Okay. Of... Okay, but what if I go start with queen g6, rook g6, knight e7 then? Oh, feed it just one. Alireza resigned. Oh, okay, yeah. As 
as predicted as it's, predicted it about yeah we'll we'll stay on this one because it will also end at some point um Okay, rook f6 on the board. Rook f6 on the board? See? What? See, I told you. I'm not that Wait. crazy. <laughs> I know you're not that... Uh, you're not crazy, but... What? what? Okay, after rook takes g5... Is she gonna go rook Oh, maybe just eight? like this. Oh, of okay. course. And then after this, then just takes this. Simple. Ah, and now, now we're just threatening yeah. everything. Yeah, you, you threaten everything. Simple move. Yeah? I mean, I guess so. <laughs> I, what if I just take on e6 now, bishop e6? What are you going to do? Oh, uh, this is check. Okay, I take on h6 now. I'm just going to go rook c1, oh, bishop c1 or something. Oh, no, you just... I can take this, You can do but, anything. Um, I can play you bishop c1 can. as well. Bishop c1 first, yeah. And we're playing that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's it. Wow. So Rook takes. F6. Is there anything else? Any good discovery apart from f8? I mean, I feel like we're gonna see soon, but I just yeah, I think this uh, is it. Like this, and then you just take on this, and then this is like double attack to the bishops. Yeah, maybe this is the clearest path to win. Like securing you the win for sure. Um, yeah, like she really, Tam, she really wanted to finish with drama, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't like drama, we don't six. drama at all. Yeah. What's the time situation? Oh, Anna is down to 27 seconds. Yeah, she has to, she has to move now. I don't think she will resign. I think she will play a few more moves just to see how, how the game goes. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, let's see, let's see. I mean it's it's gonna we're still gonna we're gonna see the move soon, so we expect rook g5, obviously. I mean what else, right? Okay. I, or except d4 could be an option, but no, we yeah. just took this beautiful pawn on f6, so after d4. Um we don't care about it. We can we could just move the queen. Right? Queen e5, yeah. And after bishop takes, queen takes. Like this, and it's still an 87, yeah? Yes, yeah, you still, still have this 97 somehow. Mm -hmm. Some way, somehow. So, but wait, wait, wait. Mm -hmm. Can we check the evil bar? This position? After, yeah. After, no, after rook f6, Ooh, I want to. Look at that. <laughs> we make a mistake. No, no. Yeah, and also check it after rook f6 because if oh, I no. see correctly, oh, this rook is f this is a bad move. Oh my gosh! So mm. this position, let me check my move. Yeah. Um, oh my god! Hang on, hang on. In this position, this is still winning. I am so tempted to play c3 in this one. Is c3 a good move? Okay, it's not a bad. It's not a good move. Takes takes here <laughs> here. I think you have to okay. play something like. Okay, knight c6 is good, and after yeah. here, taking is good, but yeah. I think you just... Bishop f6, right? This is what we so, talk about. Yeah. And then, see? White maintains the the advantage, because after this, check here, and then knight e7, I would say. And then, yeah, there you go. Knight e7 wasn't the best move, but this 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 is still enough to win the game. But Tan apparently went a bit too fancy... Oh, my bad, because I, I recommended this rook f6 move, yeah? <laughs> okay, you already said before, you know, that you two are telepathically talking. So, yeah, rook f6 <laughs> was your fault Ooh, now. But this was a bad move, Laura. So what should be, what should Anna have done? So d d4, so d4 was the move, or? Oh, d4 was the move, okay. Was it? Yeah. Oh, wow. So That's d4 crazy, was the right? move. So taking on g5 was a bad move, but this is a very hard decision to, to make in such a time. Yeah. Wow. So, so what's the difference? So d4, ah, because now you can actually take on f6 without having to worry about this bishop maybe. Because now, after bishop, wait, what? What is going on these people? Ah, taking on <laughs> oh, f6 is also good. 
Oh, wait, but she played that, right? She played that. So what's the difference? Because we're talking about knight e7. If taking like this, like this, and then let's say I play something like this. Oh, maybe this is it. Like this. No, this is wrong. This is wrong. <laughs> I'm, I was too fancy again. Uh, what? I don't understand either. This is so many complications in one spot. Um, like how is black holding on here? Maybe this. No, this is wrong again. Gosh. <laughs> um, no, like this is really hard and Anna doesn't have time to figure it out either. So maybe doubling up the rook then to this side. But like we're this. just taking on g8, aren't we? Yeah, that's true. If so taking on what? g8, then take on... Oh my gosh, the bar, you know, just up and down, up and down. What a crazy position. It looks this is like crazy. Yeah, all the moves that we make is... Oh, queen f5. Queen f5 is the move, of course. So Okay, so let's find let's find one right move here. One right <laughs> is move. Is it not... Yeah. Can I go something? Okay, oh, yeah, seven. Yeah, and can I go something like? Wait, what can I even do? Like I wanted to go ninety four, but then queen f five is like basically checkmate at this point, right? So bishop mm -hmm. e six then. Bishop e six, queen takes maybe. I mean rook takes. Ah, maybe that's it. Rook takes, knight takes, queen takes. And then I'm doubling the rooks somehow or not. Yo, this is tough. Yeah, bishop e6. Yeah, this is tough. If you take, it's even better for black now because this sacrifice <laughs> is not doing anything. Because whenever there is this, I think you have this, yeah? Yeah, this is it. Wow, so it's not over yet oh. for Anna. Oh no, Tan, I trusted you with Bishop H7 and look what happened. Look yeah. at that. <laughs> so this is this is why you shouldn't go too fancy. When you're when you're seeing just one winning line and then you just you just need to go and well it looks nice. The idea looks really nice actually. And and actually 97 is on the board, so we were right. But Anna now needs to find Bishop E6 and I don't know if she has time. Yeah, bishop e6. I mean, this position needs to cal you need to calculate. I mean, in the end, I think Tan will will still win the game because Anna will make some blunder or something like that. Because yeah, but anyway, you have to stop queen f5, and there is no other move than bishop e6. Yeah, so I agree. Um, and I, I mean, Anna is was world bleach champion, so mm -hmm. short time controls are her specialty. And I I think she will hold on how many six moves she needs to play. I think that's possible. So I don't know. We'll see if Tan will manage to to trick her somehow. Yeah, yeah. Wow, this is this is how to say, uh it's making me nervous. Um if I were in Anna's position right now, yeah, I would be quite shaky because a few seconds left on the clock, and then this is the position that you got. It's not like a simple rook end game or something. Not like any, 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 far from simplicity. Um, Bishop e6, we talk about it, and he hasn't been played yet. I have a suspicion she might, she might come up with a move like rook g6 or something like this. But what did she do? She played rook e4. Ooh, and the bar has gone up for Tan Zongyi again. And what's wrong with Rook E4? <laughs> yeah, what's actually what's wrong with it exactly? Like Queen F5 or Queen G6? F5, it so... has to be. No, the thing is now. I, I don't. Yeah. After Queen, after Rook mm -hmm. here, I think you can just um, take Rook take E4. The rook. Take the rook. No, no, not shoot, when shoot, shoot, shoot. E1 is hanging. Ah, E1, E1 is hanging. Is hanging. E1 so is hanging. first, let's take rook e4 or something, yeah? Rook e4 and knight e4, so... and then now we can take... And this is yeah. made in 11. Do we go queen f7? No, 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 that's too fancy. Let's not make it fancy. No, I think this is like this. This, this, and then this. Or oh, maybe not. <laughs> can we check queen f7? Queen f7 might be is the move, actually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then you have to take, take, and then there's <coughs> nothing stopping f8, right? Yeah. 
Rook F6 doesn't work, just no, Bishop no, on no, B2. No. There is a fancy move here. Rook takes H6, and then you under promote as a knight. <gasps> oh my god, that's so great. I would love to see that finish. That might happen, but, actually. But no, there's actually the rookie 4 was on the board immediately. So instead of... Oh. So oh, they okay. took, yeah, the rookie, yeah four, rookie 4, and yeah. then rook takes e4, knight takes e4, and Tanzongi was like, okay, let me just simplify this. Knight takes g8 should be winning. Mm. Because you have e7 coming up. What else do you have? Oh, Everything. no, no, you have to give a check first because the, knight, uh, the queen is hanging. So you After have to queen take... g8? Yeah. yeah, you have to take, and after... Yeah. Oh, wait, can I just go queen e7? Queen e7. No, no, h6 is hanging, h6 is hanging. We have to be very careful here. Queen f7 again. Queen f7, no? That's right. <laughs> wow, there's nothing wow. to stop this queen. I mean, this pawn on, on f7. No, that's insane. Oh, that's beautiful. That's insane, yeah. Wow, is this how the game will finish? Looks um, like it. We are... Where are we right now on live board? Queen f7 is already played. Oh, beautiful. Okay, resignation soon by Anna then. Wow, yeah. that's so beautiful. What a beautiful finish. It's a beautiful finish, but Anna is contributing to it too. Uh, uh, because if Tan Zongyi didn't... I mean, Tan Zongyi played this rook f6, which was uh, not the best move in the game, but uh, Anna's reply was not also the best and this can happen. Otherwise, um, I like actually Tanzongi's game against Vaishali because it's just pure domination. Um, Tanzongi yeah. played a very good chess from start to finish. But in this one, yeah, Anna contributed to it. Like Anna, Anna played mistakes <laughs> and uh, in the end, this yeah. is what we have. I think the resignation has already happened on the board. It's just not showing yet. And mm. uh, wow, there are so many <laughs> games that I would like to look at, but I really have to um, take a break and yeah. more yeah, coffee more because coffee. more exciting games are coming very soon. Exactly. So before we do that, I just want to quickly show this position. We saw the, we saw it until rook f8 and the rook didn't hide to f1, but instead rook c1, we talk about it. The bishop is going to be pinned and it indeed happened. And after knight d2, bishop d5 and Fashali resigned. Um, very well done, very good play by Katrina Lahno. And there is also a resignation. We saw this game earlier on. So after queen, C, after queen c4, queen b7, queen c7, just offering a trade. And they just keep playing until, until feed it literally hit move 40. Mm. Because it didn't change the nature of the position at all. Feed it was just playing around and yeah. just waiting until she he gets to move 40 and this yeah, is very where convincing. yeah and after he hits move 40 Ali Reza decided that there's nothing <laughs> else to <laughs> fight for. for and he resigned and mm. therefore Fidit made the upset of the day yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm very excited I don't know if no Florida will probably not give an interview today but if he did I would be very excited to listen to it just because I want to know the mindset because be behind queen takes f2 mm -hmm. but I what a clear win by Vidit yeah yeah what a clear win what a nice finish by Vidit very well done um yeah and well Laura it is time for a quick break again before we enter the most critical time of the of the round so guys stay tuned in the chat we'll be back i will give you the multi-board view of the open section with two remaining games still going on see you very soon
Hello, welcome back everyone. And we are reaching, I think, the last hour of uh, the round of today. And we already have four games finished. Two in the open and two in the women's section. And let's see the game that's currently in time trouble. That's between Connor Humpy versus Litting J. Mm -hmm. This looks like, we didn't touch this uh, game for so long, but let's stick to the current position because because Kaneru is um from my from what I saw, she had like under a minute, a few seconds away, so she had to make the move very fast. And mm -hmm. what do you think about the this end game? It looks like Black is just having an extra pawn. Yeah, I mean it looks like the game developed very well. It was the King's India that we were looking mm -hmm. with this eight six, and it seems like Black was just in control kind of already back then and yes it's still now i mean this a pawn you know it's coming down so um yeah i would yeah. i would not be comfortable i would not be comfortable in this end game especially because end games are so technical and i'm not really a technical player and uh, oh. i would <laughs> oh yeah okay this is how you get me this is how you beat me okay just get into the end game <laughs> No, 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 you're you're so humble. It's just like I don't I don't believe that you are not a technical player. I think I think you are <laughs> still very strong in the end game too. But I think this is this is the way you're trying to trap your future opponents by saying I'm not a technical player. I'm bad in the end game. But in the meantime, you were like, no, I'm okay. I'm <laughs> fine in the end game. And as you mentioned it, Laura, yeah, Litting you just played a five and trying to use um her advantage right away. Mm -hmm. I like that. I mean, the thing is, they only have one more move to play, and then they're gonna think for some time to, especially Humpy. Uh, she's very good at in in end games in general, so mm -hmm. she will. I think she will calculate everything till the end. I don't know the evaluation. I guess Black is. is I don't Black know if Black is better, winning. Yeah? That's the question. Better. Or, I mean, here at this point when there's an end game, it's either draw or it's winning. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the question. Are we winning? Yeah. I think yes. If Black is very close to winning, as you said, just keep pushing the pawn. And once the pawn is on A3 or safely nestled on A3, I think it's just going to be easy for mm. Black to continue. But let's see if Bishop E8 is happened on the board. Yeah, knight, knight, knight C3. C3 yeah. Yes, and then just making a way for the pawn to keep pushing forward. Mm. And Bish knight G3 is what happened on the board. And mm. the thing you just push A4 without... <laughs> really um worrying about the pawn on e4 so and both of them already entered the second time control and they have extra 30 minutes each but let's mm -hmm. let's try to figure out what happened here let's say i, I take this pawn mm -hmm. with anything it's... i guess the knight the knight right? yeah. oh bishop oh it's fine yeah uh no just i go push, a3 yeah? anyway yeah just mm -hmm. keep pushing and then it's it you cannot stop or maybe you can or maybe in the end you have to you have to trade the knight with the pawn or the bishop with the pawn and then trying to defend mm -hmm. that end game like if i could i would just go c5 and exchange these pawns already yeah. because then there are highest chances of me to draw this game but i cannot do yeah, that I cannot do so. that yeah because you can just simply take mm -hmm. it there with either pawn or bishop actually bishop is fine because you cannot yeah. take this, yeah, this knight, knight is coming and G is, yeah. yeah. So A4 is already on the board. Mm. Yeah, how do we continue? Okay, what if we take with bishop? Bishop E4, does that change anything? Anything or is that the same? Yeah. A3. And maybe knight E2 now. Ah, yeah. so that is the idea. So maybe it's knight C3 first and then we play A3. So that we can we can oh. forget about this knight e2. Yeah. So now the bishop has to move. Let's say the yeah. bishop moves here, then we can play this. And then the only way to stop this is this one. But then you have to and defend this type of endgame, which is quite hopeless. Mm, it's lost, yeah. This is lost. So I guess Leiting Ji might get her first win yeah. today. Looks like it. Wow. And with King's Indian. That's that's in the end game, King's Indian in the end game with black. So, I mean, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. So the move after h6, I remember, let me try to find it here. So, oh, Conero played your idea c5. What? But, 
Of wow. course, it would be nice if this happened on the board, but but Li Tingjie mm-hmm. didn't allow that to happen. So she took on e4, took on d6 like this, mm-hmm. and then have a good spot on e5. Yeah. And simplify everything. And now with a pair of bishops, black just stands better apparently. Hmm. Yeah, almost no yeah. attack. Mm-hmm. And now yeah, just yeah, winning yeah. the pawn by one by one and control, control. in control, yeah. Mm-hmm. And now this end game and Black just won the eight pawn so easily and now, uh, yeah, knight g three and eight four on the board. Mm-hmm. I mean, I yeah, I I'm predicting that Clay will finish this her with has her first win. Yeah, in this candidate tournament, the game that might finish anytime soon is this one: Gukesh versus Hikaru. They're oh. already reaching move forty. Uh, I mean, Gukesh is, and Hikaru will come up soon. I think there's a draw offer after King G seven. This is will be my <laughs> guess, and then they will just shake hands. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, just waiting. Ah, oh, you were yeah, absolutely I'm right. correct. <laughs> Yes, absolutely correct. So yeah. nothing much actually happened on the on the game. It was um a quite a peaceful draw because I, I mentioned earlier that I think Gukesh just made it easier for Hikaru to develop his pieces and not having problems in his position. And this game went like this. And knight moves to c8, castle, yeah, and simplification on the on the queen side, another simplification. Mm. So it's like, yeah, uh, to me, it looks like Gukesh has, has uh, set up the drawing structure against uh, Nakamura. Yeah, because for sure. In this position, yeah, there's we, we actually didn't miss much on this game because it's been very quiet and then there will be, yeah, some dance with the bishop and the rook, but nothing much really. Yeah, he rook here because if you keep taking on this, I can take this one as well. And... Gukesh has been just playing for a draw. Uh, I think in the last few moves, it's it's Hikaru who is trying to find something out of this position. But since the position for white is a little bit too solid, there's almost nothing that you can find it. And then eventually they do this trade, another trade, and then this is like a silent draw offer. And then, yes, and they agreed for another draw. So again, it's good. We didn't miss, miss much on this one um let's see yeah we didn't predict it a draw i think before, before oh yeah game, we didn't so. we didn't yeah i think so yeah. yeah okay so the in the open section there is only one game one game left remaining that's between Parknananda and abasov <laughs> and they have to make another six and seven more moves to make to the time control and i was just reading um the chat earlier and Eric Rosen made a very nice observation. He said that until move, how many moves? Like, um, I think. Yeah. Okay, until here, actually, 29 moves. Yeah. His observation was, Rob never did any retreating moves. From the first oh. move until the 29 moves. It's either you're going forward or you keep on the sideways so let's let's take a look better let's let's prove it wow, let's prove yeah. it so it's up i mean going up 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 yeah so always going to wow and then going again and then up again up 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 see and sideways so it's always up okay. and sideways yeah. and then up 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 sideways up and wow up. <laughs> This oh is my the god. Spirit. This is the spirit. And then still, you see, until move 26, G4, keep going forward. Wow. Forward. forward. That's... And then here, forward again. And after this, this is the only, this is, yeah, knight GE4. You have to take back with the knight, and it's now going, it's a retreating move. But at least I'm yeah, 29 yeah. moves. This is the spirit of Parknanana's uh, play, you know? You're not going to retreat any of the pieces. Maybe this is what Peter Swidler told him before um the game the key of today's game is you don't retreat until the queens are traded <laughs> and it is exactly what he did in the game knight ge4 this is the <laughs> only retreating move by pragnananda 
um, and then bishop b8, and then f6, but and yet you still keep going forward now. One retreating move and then keep going forward, and or sideways, forward again. Oh forward wow! Again. <laughs> wow, that's so impressive, though. Impressive, right? <laughs> I'm impressed. I. If Eric had not mentioned that, I would never thought about it. But now that I know it, I'm very impressed. I'm even more impressed than I was before with with his play. And I'm like, I, I kind of love the knight pair now. Yeah, yeah. It's just such a nice... I mean, again, the only retreating <laughs> move Prakhnananda made was because he had to take the queen back with one of the knights, yeah? So it doesn't matter if he took it with the C knight, it's still like a retreating move. So it's like yeah. it's like the only the only mm -hmm. retreating move uh, you have to make. But I mean, uh, you were forced to play it, so yeah, you were can forced, it count as a retreating move, you know? Can yeah. we look through the fingers here and say But when you have <laughs> but when you have options Fraktananda yeah. chose to just keep moving forward or sideways, not retreating back. And I don't think a move like King G1 here is the move that Fraktananda <laughs> has in mind. Possibly A4 is the idea. You know, you just want to mm. move forward with this pawn, just keep going forward again. Uh, or sideways, maybe this knight. Or taking here, or I don't know. This looks really good for white, actually. I, I am considering taking on c8, going rook d8, and then rook a8, and just taking the a6 pawn. How is that? Uh, sorry, can you repeat? Oh, so knight c8. Knight yeah, c8, rook this c8. is what happened. Okay, and then... rook, f, rook f c8, I guess. Rook f, uh-huh. And now rook d8. Rook d8, okay. Yeah. And uh, let's see... I, okay, I think I have to take here. Yeah, let's take this I, one. I think so, and now king h7. Yeah, and now uh, rook eight is also on the board. And now rook a eight. I rook was thinking. Eight. Just a simple idea, just grabbing the pawn on a six. Yeah, and this is what happened. Rook f c eight, rook d eight is on the board, and if you play king h seven immediately, you can just simply take this, mm -hmm. take this, and take the pawn. Yeah, I think this is enough. Yeah. And after this, you have b five, and oh. you have two extra pawns in the king's uh, in the queen's side, and it's enough to make a draw. Uh, to make a win. Sorry. But after rook d8, Abbasov is still thinking, possibly, what could he possibly think? Is there any other way to stop it? Like, okay, I have to take. I guess he's considering take what's here. better way because, ah, he took already, yeah, rook d8 and, and rook a8, yeah. So they, how many moves do they have to make? Three more moves, okay. Mm -hmm. mm. King h7? Yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, a8. rook f, you think we'll see rook f6 now? Maybe we should see one. Ah, maybe that's the better way. And if I go a4? And then bishop a3 maybe or oh, okay let Knight me think is... actually because with yeah. bishop a3 you take with the rook oh yeah i can do that as well yeah yeah you're right ah maybe it's a5 and after rook a5 you're going okay this doesn't matter yeah 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 you can play rook a6 again i was thinking of yeah. this but then rook a6 is there yeah Oh, what could be the move then after rook a8? I think bishop c1 uh, it, has to be played. It's it's on the board. Do you think it has to be played? This is difficult now because you have to know what kind of endgame you're letting. Oh, sorry. Rook b rook b6. Just gonna get the pawn like that. Wait, how are you getting the pawn? Oh, shoot. Just knight takes it. Okay, 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 okay. Bishop c1, a4... A4, yeah. I mean, bishop c1 forcing my pawn to, to go forward like that. Yeah, rook f6 was played. Yeah, I, just, I was thinking about that, actually. And then if after this? I don't know. You have to hope this endgame is not losing, yeah? <laughs> rook f5, maybe. You have to keep the rook on the board, right? I think that you have to do it, yeah. And yeah, he, he did play rook f5. I mean, you cannot play this endgame without rooks on the board. It's just winning for yeah. white. So you have to have some sort of a counterplay by having the rook on the board. And now maybe like switch the rook over here and then perhaps planning for g3. Somehow, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, somehow trying to trick white uh, to take the f2 pawn so I can have counterplay. But I think by evil bar, um, rook f6 was a mistake. Oh, yes. You're so, right. So bishop c1 might have been... Let's take a look. If, yeah. is, is bishop c1 the move? No, it's not no. the move. Uh, what else can be done here? 
I, I think I'd like some counterplay with the second rank, but I'm a bit worried though. if this one is happening, takes and then rook here, maybe this is it. Yeah, you have to make a counterplay. Mm -hmm. um, immediately. Yeah, yeah. Immediately. Even after this, I think you can start um, having from, oh no, rook e2. And then with g3 as the follow-up. So if you mm -hmm. go here, at least now the knight is not supporting the pawns anymore. And now you can retreat to a a2, something like this. Because now if you push like this, then I think I can start. What can I do here? Oh, bishop here, yeah? Maybe not. Yeah, that was another trick. To but there's knight e4. Oh no, knight e4. Mm. Wait. Why is... Why are end games so tough? Maybe maybe I just go around somehow. Hmm. Ah, just here. You cannot push b6 because of bishop e3. It's attacking both. Mm -hmm. But if, if you... I go a4. And I'll I'll do the same. I mean, you still cannot push your pawn, so I can I can play King B King G six first. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. You yeah. St you still cannot push your pawn. I can play King G six, and I'll be, I mean, but this is this is a hard position to to mm. think that you can. I mean, we have the eval bar with us. It's saying that it's zero zero, but during the game, it's gonna be very hard to uh, justify this position that is this equal, right? Because you have you have two extra pawns in the queen side. It looks like it's just lost for for white. Yeah. Uh, sorry, for Especially black. Especially because because black has double pawns on the G file, which mm -hmm. really are not improving. Yeah. But yeah, this is this is the way to go to make uh, a draw. So instead, um, I pass off just to take on F six and play rook F five. And now let's figure let's figure out what to do as white. I can start with knight e4. Uh, I can also... Can I start with this? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Can I just push my pawns as fast as I can? Yeah, Yeah. the thing is, after this, there is this one. It might okay, but be... can I go knight d3 now yeah, or something? but rook here. I don't know. Mm, yeah, yeah, it's I'm a bit too loose. So maybe move the knight first or maybe move the rook first. Knight d7 was played, I think, Oh, knight right? d7? Yes, 97 right, was, yeah, played. was just played. So now he got 30 minutes and he's happy. Yeah, well, I think a very simple idea by Prague. You just want to give a check and grab another pawn. Yeah. And then, yeah. and also, and then it, it's, yeah, good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. No, then it's going to just look so easy for White because he has to connect at pawns A and B. And it's going to be so tough for Abbasov to defend another endgame. Yesterday, he was defending this queen mm -hmm. endgame for so long. And oh, another endgame for Abbas. So, so maybe King G7 to stop the check. Yeah. And then maybe it's time to start pushing the pawn. I think it is, it is now the time, yeah? Because the knight is not on C5 anymore. You can keep pushing it. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's tough. This is tough now. Nice, nice, nice game by Prague. Yeah, that's that's one thing that he does. Not moving backward, but moving forward and keep me moving forward. So that's also a very good reminder for, for us, Laura, in our game. <laughs> yeah, sometimes moving backward is not an option. So you have to keep moving <laughs> forward. <laughs> I like this approach. Frag motivated me now. So we'll keep an eye on this because this is still the last game in the open section. And we haven't talked a lot about the game that I'm going to show you now, Salimova versus Gorchkina, which looks like it's going to be a grind by Gorchkina having an extra pawn up. Oh, this looks like a tough end game to play against Gorchkina. I feel like Gorchkina is really such a strong technical player. Um, it's one of her many strengths. And she will be grinding that one. Yeah, so what happened from the opening? We saw... Yeah, we saw this position. Yeah. And then takes, takes, and knight c3. Queen d6, mm -hmm. rook ac1, rook d8, rook fd1. And yeah, a uh, very technical play by Gorchkin, I would say. 
and then having the pawn on c6 and yeah looks so far so fine and then moving the rook to e8 and g6 and switching the attention from the queen side to king side h4 this has been a theme yeah uh, in today's round too yeah when you want to start uh your attack you just push your h pawn and this is happened on the board you, oh you cannot take oh funny you cannot take on here because then there is b6 and your knight is pinned and that's mm. why in this position after a b uh white play a5 takes takes and then rook here and now takes and okay this is We're a pawn a, down now yeah no pawn down mm. with this pawn is also going to be very weak loose yeah this takes takes okay uh salimova take the pawn on b7 queen goes back but now we come down to the end game knight versus bishop with the rooks on the board rook c1 it's gonna be a torture to play this end game <laughs> yeah especially because they're on move 47 already so they got um the additional 30 minutes mm-hmm but I think Salimova already is down on 30 minutes, 13 minutes, wow. if I'm correct. And yeah, the things with black pieces here is um, it's going to be very easy for Gretchkina to move around, right? So that's why we can also see from the time situation, uh, Gretchkina didn't really spend much time to, to play because, yeah, I think it's also, okay, bishop here, because otherwise... I was thinking knight d7, check here, f5, the knight should jump at somewhere. I like the possibility of having the knight on d6 actually. It's just a little bit more yeah. comfortable, you know, you, you, you're you covering yeah. you're covering the king uh, to not have any checks on the b6, but you're also preparing for this move. You also have any knight jump to f5, to e4 at mm -hmm. some point. So I think in this position... If I were black, 98. yeah, I would play ninety eight, and then I okay. switch it to ninety six. Let's let's think about bishop h three though. Yep. And you said f five, I guess, mm -hmm. or do I need to go f five? Right. Yeah. If necessary, if it's possible, I wouldn't. I wouldn't play it. So maybe ninety eight is a little bit too hasty, because I would like to have, uh, king d six after bishop h three. So maybe let's figure a little. Better no, but move. I don't need to go f5. Maybe I can just go king f6. That's what I was thinking, yeah? Um, Instead of playing f5, king oh, f6. Then, then what can play rook d7 and stopping this idea of mine? Yeah. But can I go... I don't know if I want to do that. Can I go king g7 then? Oh, what happened? So knight h5 is oh. already on the board. Okay. King f3. And... And... Oh, maybe knight g7. <laughs> oh, maybe maybe Grichkina just found the better route to go. Knight g7 here. And then? If there is a check, then king f6. And putting mm. the knight on e6, maybe it is a, an idea too. Hmm. Yeah, but if the rook endgame happens, it's a draw now. That's or, yeah. That's possible. or is it? Oh, or not sure. It? This this is this is a passer, so it's gonna be quite tough yeah. as well. I don't know. I I really wanna um see what Goryachkina has in mind with this knight h five. If she played it, I guess knight g seven has to be played, right? What else is Goryachkina gonna do? Knight g7, bishop h3, king f6. Yeah, this looks nice. And I guess some rook c7 is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, Salibova is holding on with her with her best moves right now, I feel f5. like. f5. So, oh. Okay. Oh, this is nice. The king is stuck. The bishop cannot cannot protect both e4 and g4 at the same time and wow. and here you can just move the knight back and then you're you're going after this pawn actually yeah so yeah nice nice i idea. need to be a bit 
Yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, very nice idea, but I need to be a bit careful about Rook G7 coming in the next moves if I go Knight F6. But I feel like Goryachkina is on spot with this F5. And this is going to be a mate. So let's say, let's say you play something like this. Yeah. Like this. And then you play this. I can just go here. And after you take, <laughs> uh, yeah. I'll go here. The thing is, after here, uh, the position is quite paralyzed. You have to, mm. you have to guard this pawn, right? Otherwise, it's a checkmate. So you can play this one. So you can actually give one, one pawn like that for free because then it's paralyzed. The the rook is stuck in the, um, unless you play bishop yeah. d three actually. But still, I don't believe this position. I don't either. This looks terrible. This yeah. looks like it's winning. So it is a very nice idea. It's, it's very clear. F5 is showing intention. I want to put my knight back to F6. And I want to go after the pawn on F2 via G4 or E4. Depending which square that you didn't protect. Mm. And the king cannot move anywhere now. So that's also... Otherwise you can try to play F3 yourself. But the, the king cannot move. So in this position after, after knight H5... Yeah, you have to play king f3, yeah? You have to, yeah. f2 yeah, is yeah, hanging, yeah. yeah. And now f5, and knight f6, and knight e4, how... or knight g4. Yeah, I mean, how are we trying to protect with white even, yeah? What can I do? What can I do here? Is it just loss? No, come on. There, there is this one bishop here, here, okay. like this. At least um, you're not <sighs> losing... <laughs> have to but but yeah, the knight is standing so well here oh g5 g5 such a beautiful g5 knight, is coming yeah. Yeah. and even c5 is coming c5 somehow coming. Yeah. yeah yeah nice I... very nice idea by gochikina by playing f5 and uh we'll go back to this game but uh, let's also take a look at this one this mm -hmm. end game corner humpy for soliting g so we saw the position up to a4 and Conero took on e4, a3, knight d2, king g7, bishop here, knight c3, and this is the position. So the knight can actually stay on b3, protecting a1, but that's going to be quite temporarily because the bishop can go to a3 and bishop b2. Yeah. So oh, also, there is a you want to take on b1 right now? <laughs> yeah. Oh, is this a resignable position? Because if I you, think, yeah. Be, let's say just putting it on the board like this takes mm -hmm. and takes, and then the knight cannot stop it at all. But if the bishop moves away, okay, then it has to be somewhere c2 or d3. And after this, knight has to go here. I can play bishop here and then play bishop b2. And I would actually wait. I will not promote right away. I would go like this and this, yeah? Oh, yeah, the best way to win. The Indeed. best way, just yeah. very clean. Uh, I Is that resignable? I think I think so. I think, I think so Koneru too. just lost. It's just forcing can, win. Yeah. Also, if bishop d3, the same story. Like here and then bishop here. You cannot stop me from going bishop b2, knight here and knight here. You just simply cannot stop it. No, 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 you cannot. The yeah. king is a bit too far as well. I mean, the king can try, go king e1, bishop b2, king d2, but maybe that's the best try. Maybe it is. Maybe that's the best try, but here you have to move first, yeah? Like this, and then like this. Mm -hmm. the... mm -hmm. Is there anything else? Then this, and then let's say king goes here. Yeah. Then bishop goes here. Yes. And then king goes here. And then this goes here. And then you go here. And then I'll just wait. And then I'll move this one next move. Or you can go here. Takes. Oh, but this is also cannot be the move because you have knight c3 back. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think that's that's it. Uh, what else? What else is there after knight c three? No, yeah, I have to move the bishop. I just have to. No, yeah, I think it's resignable. I don't know. We'll try Koneru 
or but I think in any case I think Leia I Leia, Leia is just Going starting to have... her tournament Yeah. right now <laughs> yeah lovely lovely that's that's good news for for her and her team that she's finally scoring well I don't want to jinx her but hopefully might be winning this Yeah, okay. And and in the game where Prague and Abasov something developed, they they exchanged the rooks. Um Ooh, let's see. wait. Um, so we saw the position of the rook f5, knight d7 and king g7 did happen, and rook f5, so just a4. So I guess taking the rook will be quite an easier endgame for Prague, because you just want to push like this, and the bishop, funny, the bishop cannot stop a7. <laughs> not at all No. oh what a what a funny This geometry one, in okay, the game you have to have this one, but all of these squares are protected. yeah And uh, we oh have a resignation the game's finished from Abbasov. yeah So let's see how the game went. Uh, after king g6, a4, and then g3, just take the rook, and then the same thing happened. But now you have bishop e3, actually, but uh, you can just stop it with knight c7, knight c5. Yeah, thanks to the pawn on b4. And Mm -hmm. you cannot stop it from other side. Yeah, this is it. Wow, very nice. And then, look, the only retreating... No, there is no retreating move. No, because the game ended after a6. So there was, there was only one retreating move out of 45 moves. Laura, right? wow <laughs> I mean Am I dreaming? this is a game for the books you know So... Anyone has to clip it, yeah? Anyone has to clip it. Look, Yeah. in this game, round number six in the candidates between Pragnananda versus Abasov, Prague only played one retreating move. And that was the only move to make because he had to take the queen back. And any knights taking on e4 is like the only retreating move. But the rest of the game, he made all... the forwarding actions going forward 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 no retreating no no going backward or sideways so let's take a look from the start again this is such a nice observation by eric rosen actually he put this on the chat but on, until move 29th only because after that yeah we can see that it's like forward 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 and then sideways castle is sideways and then forward 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 sideway Side way, forward again, and side way forward, side way forward. There's no retreating move until move 29. And after this forward, even the king moves forward. Even here we go. <laughs> Yeah, we go and forward. in this one, forward again. Wow. Takes, takes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is the only Yeah. retreating move to make. Uh, knight g takes e4, bishop b8. Forward, sideways, forward, forward. Forward, 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 forward. Oh, actually, rook takes a6, wasn't it? The retreating move. Yeah, this is okay. Two retreating No, moves. two Two moves. retreating <laughs> moves. Oh, no. But then, forward, another retreating move. Why didn't I, why didn't I realize that there are this retreating move on the a file? So we have three. Maybe three is the golden rule. Three. Yeah, because now, keep going, keep going. And then Yeah, this is three. where Abbasov resigned. So... Out of all the moves that Pragnananda made, 45 moves, he only made three retreating moves. There you go. We have the number. So well done. It's a very aggressive approach by Pragnananda. I really like it. Yeah. Uh, it's very suitable to his style as well. So well done for winning this one. And let's switch back to the game that's still currently on. Uh, which one do you want to look at? The Uh, Gorchikina or Liting Jie? uh, um. I think uh, just because something moved in late Ting Jie, uh, I would prefer this one first, Mm -hmm. and because Goyachkin's game is going to be going on for a while, and I want to save all the moves <laughs> for that time. And here, So we so saw, okay, until this position, and then let's see free. so here, Bishop Bishop C2, C2 was played. A2, Knight B3. Okay, so our prediction Okay. would be Bishop goes to. a3, bishop b2, and then reroute the knight to c5, and then just safely have a 
I mean, we don't need to go to b2 because we can also just go bishop b7, bishop f6. Maybe that's better because then the king doesn't ah, attack the bishop when it comes to c2. That is maybe that might be that is a good, yeah, like this because you cannot do anything in this position with white, right? Yeah, like bishop b7, mm -hmm. bishop f6. Okay, let's try like this, yeah. like this, like this, and then here we can give like this, let's say, yeah. Yeah, and like this, and then we have knight c5. Very, yeah, very well spotted, Laura. I, I like this idea better than mine. Yeah, just bishop e7, bishop f6. Uh, the bishop stands in a better square. Mm -hmm. So she's just double checking. I mean, even bishop a3 is winning. So I think even if we go king h8, it's winning because then we're pushing, putting the bishop on g7. So um, I don't, yeah, I don't see any way for white to. Okay, I think the idea is this. So let's say bishop e7. We want to go knight a1, bishop f6, bishop b3. Because we really want to... Ah, uh, yes, yes. Yeah. So in that case, maybe bishop a3 is a better move? Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, but in the end, you still win a, a pawn. I mean, a, um, a piece anyway. So it should be fine as well. Or maybe not. Mm, yes, I, I want to keep this pawn, you know, forever, till it's a queen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In this position like this, yeah, you mentioned like this, maybe there's some check. Yeah, I can but you go a check, here. Right? Now we have to be careful. <laughs> yeah, but at least you have this, yeah? yeah. Takes, takes like this, yeah. This should be winning, but takes a long time. Yeah, so maybe it is it is right to just play bishop here, not to have any blunders like that. Not blunders, but not to have any lines like that, and then just secure the win. And then yeah, letting J listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> she played bishop a three with the idea of bishop b two, and then rewrote the yeah. knight to c five. I like that one more actually. So yeah, we're gonna see probably king d three, king e three from Humpy, king d two, and and. Yeah, king e1 or king e3, yeah? yeah. I, either those and then after this. And yeah. yeah, this is the position. Okay, king a3, bishop b2, let's say like this, and then you can mm. reroute this. And nothing can stop it, surprisingly. After knight c5, and then you can just take this and then promote. If it's so easy, that's 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 it. Maybe in the, so, okay. maybe yeah. in that reason, it was better for the bishop to be on d3 anyway but i don't see any change like in this position let's say here then king here 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 at least now there is this one but again even if this happened you can pull back the bishop over here exactly yeah That's and then the like c5 is still there so yeah so this is this is very nice endgame by letting j she finally she finally um has a winning game you know some some significant uh chance to win the game and this is also of course like this is a winning end game for for her because the the other five games that she played uh even though she made three draws uh mm -hmm. those are not the easiest draw to make like for example she was she was uh very much losing against Anna Muzichuk, but she finally mm -hmm. got uh, to make a draw and by the way after bishop a3 king a3 happened and they think they just moved bishop b2 right away okay so maybe let's stay on this one a bit yep to see i mean uh, yeah i think we're just gonna see king d2 and knight a4 what else right i mean even if white tries to go forward like king f4 we're not like we Nothing, yeah, knight a4, knight c5, I mean, yeah, okay, okay, I don't mm -hmm. see anything, I really don't see anything else. Yeah, I don't see anything else either, so, it's a very, yeah, very technical win by Li Tingjie, um, starting from the opening, I would say, like, she made all the right calls, and, and Kodaru is, has been suffering a lot, and this position is just almost busted. Okay, yeah, maybe this is GG's. Maybe this is just GG's and we can go back to Goryachkina if something happened. Ah, so, yeah. So after f5, Salimova played bishop h3, trying to find out what is happening. 
Ah, hmm. so if you play this, rook g7 here, takes, and then after this, at least you have takes on f5, and the king is escapes to this one. But after this, 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 what do you do? <laughs> this is just walking to a mate. Wow. Am I getting oh, it's not to a get bit yet. Checkmated? Here and then here. This is what I meant. Now it is, yeah. Um, wow. No, but it's a good idea, but it doesn't work, yeah? It's a good idea, but it doesn't work, yeah. It, it, it looks like... Um, it looks like it's a good idea, that's true, because you want to give more space for, for the king, but you have the space, but not necessarily the good one, because then it just walks into a self-made position. And yeah, but I don't have to take bishop f5 immediately. Can I just go rook g2 in that at that point? Because then I'm still attacking f5. So yeah, uh, um, I think in this position, out blinking f6. f6. Yeah, yeah, your pieces are paralyzed. You cannot move. <laughs> I still cannot move. This is so sad. Yes, yeah, and, and then C just, is just running. keep moving. Or even d4 is also a move. Because then I have rook c3 and then takes on here if you take it. Right? Yeah. So yeah. King knight f6 is already on the board. So Gorchkina oh. was not afraid of this rook g7 idea. Because black has definitely a very concrete continuation with knight e4. Hitting on f2. And I think it's almost over for Salimova. Because if you... Unless, unless she changed her mind. Like, in this position, she played bishop f1 to guard this pawn with mm. this one. But again, in this position, uh, I would move my knight to g4, actually. Because after this, I will give a check. And after oh. this, I will just take the bishop. And then I will yeah. have two pawns up. So, oh, that's lovely. Yeah. But this is, this is the last try that Salimove can do. Uh, because if she just sits quietly and not doing anything, not trying to steer the pot, then she will lose the game gradually. So this is a good try, even though it's it's making the game towards the end rather quicker. But yes, we can expect Knight E4 coming up soon. Yeah, no, she has to try for sure. Because otherwise this bishop is terrible in this endgame. It just so shows how much a knight has power even though all the pawns are on white squares yeah you would think you know white will just attack these pawns with the bishop no 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 this knight is the it's it's is the star of the game yeah so rook g6 we're gonna see king f7 king f7 already on the board yes yeah and what now what will Slimova try i think she will try rook g2 i don't think she will go for bishop f5 right I've I've no clue actually. Yeah, <laughs> both are possible. Uh, rook g two again. It's not in the spirit of rook g seven. She actually might try just bishop f five. You know because um, if the game ends, then it is how it is. Oh, but she played rook g two. Oh, I would play. No, king she's a gonna. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. No, it's okay. Go ahead. Now she's gonna. You would play. No, no, she's gonna suffer now. I wanted to say with this with this rook and bishop on h three. Um, you would have played bishop f5? No, king f6 here. Yeah, no, king f6, yeah, of course. King f6, and then just enjoy the position, because the uh, this one cannot move anywhere. Actually, I'm curious. About? Oh, no, no, I was trying to make a stalemate for white, but of course, like, if you <laughs> eliminate this rook, then at least the king can go to g2. So <laughs> that doesn't work. So yeah, just king f6, and you have... Options here, letter uh, to play c5 or d4, and yeah, let's say rook h2 now to try to reroute my bishop to an active square. Uh, okay, c5. Yeah. Yeah. The bishop only place F1. that you can play is this yeah. one. I cannot even if I check you, it's literally just one check. So. And I can now yeah. stop it by playing. <laughs> Um, C4, like I, I literally get there in time. So, oh, King F6, Gretchkina did play Rook H2 because this is the only the only move to be to be played. And I think we'll see C5 soon, followed by C4, and then just stopping everything in White's position. And if let's say the Bishop moves here. 
if it's a check and here mm-hmm. this, this is, might be something to actually think about because this is not too too clear so mm. okay after rook h2 mm. i cannot yeah, you were saying d4, d4. but d4, d4 is not protected yeah. so I, you can take and check here and then come here yeah so that's not a good way but at the no. very least now i can i think you can play rook here no Hmm. Yeah, just rook here. Go, mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. If I go for something like bishop g2 to activate the rook from behind. Yeah, oh, but eventually so you have to also. come back yeah. here. So I play c5. Oh, so even yeah. if you activate your rook, um, yeah, I don't know, then I'll come back here. Just rook black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, cannot do anything. So, so this is also a good move here. Yeah, maybe like, rook f1. Even if I try rook h1 here, you can, you can do it. Oh, after bishop here, yeah? Here, and then rook h1. Oh, here and now I can play this because there is a check here. If you play this. Oh, yeah, I'm losing <laughs> all the ways. Yeah. Everything well, is finito. So rook c1 looks like a good move, but uh, Gorchikina is still thinking and she still has like 20 minutes on the clock. Uh, the game between Conor Fessel and Slitting J already finished. So we saw the position up to, um, I think up to here. And in this yeah. position, we're talk- talking about King D2 and something mm-hmm. like that, knight here, knight here. But uh, gonna come up with last C5. Try. <laughs> the last try, exactly. B takes C5, and after King D3, just knight B5. So, and also, oh, the knight goes to D4, yeah? Yes, and uh, resignation, yeah? Resignation, after yes. Yeah. Very, w- uh, very well done beautiful. by Li Tingjie, yeah, of her first victory in this uh, women's candidate in Toronto. And it's I think it's also because Kanero is not in her great form. Um, yeah, but well, mm-hmm. hopefully there are more. We have actually three decisive games so far in the women's section and following the last one, which also I think should be, should be decisive again. So mm-hmm. we will have four decisive games in the... In the women's section, Laura. Yeah, that's crazy because yesterday we had four draws in women's section. So today um, they went crazy, uh, which I love. This is what this is what we we're here for, right? We want action, and they're giving us action, all of them. Uh, yeah. And that's exciting because is that gonna, how is that going to change the standings? Um, so lay one, Anna lost. Tan is going to be leading with four and a half because she won. Yes. But Achkin is going to be on four points and Lagno on three and a half, yeah? Exactly, yeah. yeah so, so they're just three leaders are going to continue leading, yeah? Yeah, Tan <laughs> still will still be leading uh, by herself with four and a half, followed by Gorchkina. Mm-hmm. Assuming that she wins this one, she'll be in the clear second with four out of six. And then Katra Lahno also won, so she'll be three and a half. Uh, Salimova, Salimova, apparently she's losing in this position. So Faisal mm-hmm. also lost. And yeah, so it will change quite a little bit there in the midfield to the lower field of, of the standing. So let's come back to this position again. And C5 was played instead mm-hmm. of Rook C1. C5 was played followed by Bishop yeah. F1. Yeah, I mean, this is winning anyhow, anyway, right? We can go c4 now, we were talking about this, and bishop e2, and then we were wondering how are we how are we pushing now? Yeah, that's why you suggested rook c1 before. Oh, I, I think it's just knight c3, and then you have to move back here. But then how do I continue? Good question. What if I just <laughs> played this one? Okay. And now can I go king g2? King g2 and maybe... Yeah, I'll, I'll move back here, I think. At e4. Mm, and now bishop e2. This will be then... Just c3, I think. Uh, I, I have rook e1, for example. Oh, but c3. Perfect. But if you want to go there... Okay, we have... We have the position yes. on the board, by the way. So maybe yes. it's better to 
play rook c1 now. You just want to focus on pushing the pawn, maybe. Yeah, but now can I just go rook h6? King, let's say, where e7 or mm -hmm. e7, I do want to go know. from behind, yeah? Yeah. I mean, it's still winning, I think, because this knight on e4. Ah, but I'm going to win right away by playing rook e1. Oh. Are you? Wait. Yeah, because you cannot help this this bishop at all. Knight d2 is coming. Like, even bishop c4 doesn't work doesn't because work, of knight yeah. d2. Oh, even my last tries. Okay, yeah. We just have to wait now for... Um... I'm pretty sure c3 is, is good enough to win anyway. Yeah. I think like, so, so. Even like this position, yeah, and then there's no better try than taking, then maybe even you take like this. Or, I mean, this this should be winning too. Uh, so yeah. C3, um, yeah, with the idea of Rook C1 or even Rook D2. Yeah, so any move, any move is winning here. Or even if you want to be a bit more patient, you can step sideways a little. Oh, but... Um, Another another side actually. <laughs> so so, so Gretchen I chose D2 instead of B2. Yeah, this is also pretty much winning. Because the bishop still cannot move anywhere, the king cannot move. The only thing that can move is the rook. So maybe let's try your idea. Rook h6 here and then let's let's put it over here. The and then ah, and then I'll just push. Yeah? Or not. I can. Or just king moves d7, and now you can push the pawn freely. Yeah, I agree. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, everything is winning at this point with, with this beautiful rook and this beautiful right. knight. Mm -hmm. So I don't think there's a wrong move for black. Uh, okay, maybe rook e2 is a wrong move for black, but other moves... Even d4 at some point should be winning. Okay, I have to play c3, but yeah, yeah, everything. Yeah, everything's winning. Wow. Okay, what a game mm -hmm. then by Gretschkina. I mean, I hope, I, I know that their encounter hasn't been easy for both of them because uh, mm -hmm. I remember the final between Salimova versus Gretschkina in the World Cup Baku, even though Gretschkina won it, but Man, it was such oh, a yeah. roller coaster event for Salimova because she was so winning in so many positions. Um, mm -hmm. But Gretschke, you know, with her experience, she managed to um, get the better of Salimova and won the match. And this game, yeah, I think it was quite a close match uh, starting from the opening, but we can also see uh starting from the middle game it's only Gorchkina who is driving the game to her own direction and eventually uh won an extra pawn and now we are seeing no longer an extra pawn position but i think it has turned to be like a better position for our Gorchkina to win the game because now every single piece like especially the bishop and the king they're paralyzed and Black is just enjoying the passer on the C file, and things are looking good for Gorichkina. Yeah, but if you remember from the opening, I was saying how only white is the one that can kind of be confident in pushing forward. And again, Goryachkina just proved me wrong, you know, my Catalan, mm -hmm. <laughs> my beloved Catalan with white uh, is not so easy to play when you're playing uh, even against this classical line and against such a classical player like Izgoyachkina. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, she she really impressed me with black pieces because my belief was that black is kind of suffering long term as white is attacking the center and is pushing in the center. So, so yeah, I am surprised by this result, kind of. From the open, given the opening that happened, right. Well, we're still waiting for Salimova to make the moves, but while we're waiting, we can also start doing some recap of today's mm -hmm. rounds. I'll switch to the multi board view in the open section. So we have a very very peaceful game between Ian Nepomneci versus Fabiano Caruana. It was the four knights variation e four e five. 
and I think both of the players already set their minds to have a a quick day at the office and they drew right away after move 40 or 41st. And the game between uh, Gukesh and Hikaru also, it was quite peaceful. Uh, at some point, I think Hikaru was trying to find something in the position, but it was a bit too equal and Gukesh uh, just managed to um, get a draw easily. And two decisive games in the open section for round six um, were done by Fidit versus Ali Reza and Pragnananda versus Abasov. And we saw how Ali Reza took the suspicious pawn on F2 and <laughs> it cost him a lot. It cost him the whole game. And Fidit just managed to convert the advantage uh, easily and got him a full point of today's round. And Pragnananda played a very, very impressive approach in his play. He's never retreating uh, in the game between him and Abasov. He keeps playing forward, forward and forward until he managed to um, steal the deal with the pawn on a6 going for a promotion soon to A8 where Abasov didn't wait until it happened to resign. And in the women's section, uh, we have a fantastic game by Katrina Lahno defeating uh, Faishali. Uh, the game might be a little bit switch over there, but uh, we also saw a very attacking game by Tanzongi versus Anna Muzichuk. Um, Liting Jie also won a nice end game against Conor Humpy, while now we are looking at the game between Salimova versus Gorechikina. Still the last one to finish, but it looks like Gorechikina will seal the, seal the deal soon. And after Rook D2, Rook H6 is already on the board. And now I assume King will go to E7 so that okay. if you play Rook C6, at the very least, there is King D7. And indeed, yeah. Gorecha cannot play King <laughs> E7. Yeah. Yeah. I. What else to say uh, about the game except that I don't think there's we can expect any result. White cannot even play for any tricks. Yeah, like you said, there are no stalemates. There's you no stalemate, always, yeah. Uh, um, As usual, while we wait, I will also uh, show us the next round's pairings and looks like it's gonna be yummy. We have Hikaru Nakamura <laughs> versus Ian Nepomniachi and oh, Fabiano Caruana plays against Pragnananda. We'll see if Prak will be um, playing the same approach, no retreating moves. And <laughs> we have Nijat Abbaso versus Vidit Gujarati and Ali Reza versus Gukesh. So I think the top two matches on this on, on next round's games would be Hikaru versus Ian and Fabiano versus Pragnananda. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I think these are also going to be the most important for the standings. Um, and I am so excited to see Karana against Prague, actually, because... As we know, they're all so well prepared and so interestingly prepared. Mm -hmm. We'll see what Nepomniachtchi's approach will be tomorrow. Yeah. Though. Yes. Yes. That's that's um... gonna be that will be fireworks. I would say Hikaru has has uh, white pieces, and Ian will try to defend maybe with Petrov again. We'll see. We'll see. And in the women's pairing, of okay, this is the pairing for. Let's see if I can refresh this. There you go. Uh, the next round, we will have Katrina Lahno versus Nurgyul Salimova. Alexander Gochkina versus Tanzongi. I think this one is going to be really interesting oh. because both Tanzongi and Alexander Gochkina has, have been leading the field since, literally since the first round. And um, Anna Muzicic will play against Conor Humpy and Litinji versus Faishali. And for the last game that's still standing right now, we have some development in the moves. So after king e7, instead of playing rook c6 here, Salimova mm -hmm. chose to play another check. Rook h7, king d6, and now it's still white's She's, turn to think. She, yeah, and she doesn't have time. She has only 30 seconds at this point. 
uh, she, I think she will try to go after F pawn, but it's not going to help her. Mm -hmm. Like she can go, she can go rook h six, king c five, rook h five, and c three is just gonna be GG's. Yeah, yeah, nothing stopping uh, this pawn, and it, it has happened. So after king d six, rook h six check, king c five, and now and yeah. What can she do? She can go rook h8, but it's not going to change anything. We just still go c3, right? Yeah. And um... Rook h8, let's say c3. If you give a check, at least I can just come back here and possibly just yeah. play king d7, moving you away from the c-file, and then start focusing on this one again. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's... She doesn't want to resign Selimova though, so she she will go for a few more moves, but not long before we see the final result of today, and it's going to be decisive for sure. So that's that's exciting, mm -hmm. yeah. When yeah. you have all all uh, decisive games, I was surprised we had all decisive games in open section. That was before the free day, or it was correct? actually the Some... first day. The first day was uh, oh, immediately four was decisive it? games. <laughs> That's that's crazy, right? Yeah, that uh, was crazy. Especially in the open section, because we know all these grandmasters like to make quick draws, right? Especially yes. on the first round. Yes, especially at the beginning, but they were not saving their strength there. They were just going all in, which I love. So did Rook H5 actually happen here? It happened. Yeah, what's wrong with C3 here? Nothing. <laughs> you Literally take, nothing, yeah. You just push and then wins. Yeah, okay, you have okay, one try we'll like see. this, yeah. but then this one... Yeah, 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 that's it. Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what she, oh, no, actually, we have development. So, what happened now? Oh, C3, C3 already happened, and Rook takes F5. Okay, oh, okay. So, we'll see some resignation in two moves, maybe. I think so. Yeah. Even after Rook F7, so C2, Rook F7, we just oh, yeah. go back with the king. So, it was day two, yeah, because yes, 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 because there was. Of oh, four draws, maybe four draws in the first round, and then four wins in the second round. Yeah, that's that's exactly what happened. I, because I remember on the first on the first day it was all the same result in the open section. Mm -hmm. Also on the second day, yeah, it was. Oh yeah. Okay, four draws okay, in the so first they, round and second yeah. round it was all wins. Yeah. Oh yeah, so they did go. So they did draw first round. Yeah. Okay, I'm checking. Yeah. Yeah, I was not. Um... I was not following that precisely at the beginning because I was not home, but uh, I was shocked when I saw the results for sure. And I was I just wanted to check all the games. Yeah, they really impressed me. And yeah, now now the women are going for all all four results here as well. Yes, yes, yes. And C two already played on the board, and I think uh, Gwechkina, sorry, Salimova will try with any rook goes back to the back rank f7 or f8 just give it one more try uh to play rook c8 but yeah after knight mm. d6 i think it's fine i mean you can you can yeah call it gg I, yeah for sure maybe she will even resign here actually that's possible too mm -hmm. she doesn't have much time anyway but she has nothing to hold on to at this point Nothing's working. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It is also possible that she might be resigning at this moment because, um, again, um, we have a 15-minute delay to the real-time move uh, for the anti-cheating measure. So it is possible that the game has already ended by now, right, Laura? Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, it seems like it has ended because the clock keeps ticking, but... Um, down and down and down yeah. to zero zero <laughs> yeah yeah no i think the game is just over i think so too but what a game by gochikina again she's not almost in in most of her games she's not taking risk at all like if she can find a clear win without any risk then that that's the path that she would choose so uh even though it doesn't say the result yet but we are almost sure okay there you go uh, after C2, I think there's a resignation and Gorchkina won the game and therefore brought us to four decisive results in the women's section. 
And yeah, just what a day, Laura, what a day And, we had. and three of these results were wins with black pieces. Ooh, nice observation. Yes. Yeah. So wow. colors, colors do matter, but uh, apparently on this round in the women's section, you are playing a better chess with black pieces. So it's interesting. <laughs> we, we have many good observations of the day and we have so many fun positions to analyze as well, Laura. I think today is a more interesting day than yesterday. I mean, every day <laughs> yeah. is interesting, but especially today, we have uh, a lot of things going on, especially in the game between Fidit versus Ali Reza that took our attention away in the earlier uh, hour of the stream because Ali Reza just made a very, very suspicious and dubious opening choice followed up by a yeah, questionable decision of taking um, the pawn on F2. And hopefully, hopefully he can bounce back and tomorrow uh, scoring his first win. But it's not also going to be easy uh, because every single participant in this tournament, they are very, very strong player. So, Laura, I know it's late for <laughs> you, but thank you once again for commentating with me today. And tomorrow, um, we will have um, not only Laura and I, but we will also have Eric Rosen uh, in the commentary. So, yeah, so stay tuned because it will be the three of us covering the last game before another free day. So stay tuned. Always stick on the Liches Broadcast commentary on YouTube <laughs> and Twitch. And thank you for the our production team, our graphic designer, and everyone who is helping um, this stream. And thank you for the chats as well on YouTube and Twitch. You've been very great sports. Keep supporting us. And thank you, Laura, once again. Have a good night, everyone. And see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.